Hello and welcome to session number 26 of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello, one and all. Hi. Hello, friends. Hello. Oh. What, what was that? <laughs> Bling. That's I'm not actually. I'm not actually <laughs> doing that. Oh, that was like decoy guitar. <laughs> yeah, decoy. I'm not. I'm not actually. I can't. I don't know how to play. <laughs> we we do need a decoy guitar because one of our cats actually l likes rubbing her face against the, the strings of the guitar to the point where she has broken multiple. No, 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 no. no. She literally plucks them. She bites them with her teeth, pulls back as far as she can, and then snaps them for fun. <laughs> Oh my so God. my my high E strings are constantly breaking. <laughs> Has that not like popped her in the face? I think it must have at some point, but I don't like, know. Every it's time just I so break cathartic. A string, it hits me, and I never know where, which like makes me nervous every time. If, if it would like at least consistently hit me in the same spot, I could prepare. So I don't know how the cat's doing that. Ah. Those things are sharp. So yeah, decoy yeah. decoy guitar. But yeah, uh, how about we just go brrr, twirl around and point towards da 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 Jason for today's ah. recap. Oh. Would so you like? Uh, hmm? Cue the music. Oh. Oh. No. Oh. Please. Do Do you want some music or just no music? Uh... I don't know. What sort of music do you have? Well, I just really <laughs> have the one. Nope. Oh, um, what genre would you rather have? No, nothing. It's fine. Uh, it's fine. Let me suffer uh, in silence. Okay. 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 We are okay. ready. So for today's accurate recap, we're going to go to a hypothetical future that won't actually happen, but might be nice to think about. Oh. And we're going to go into the scene of, I don't know, a tavern or something where this sort of thing usually happens. <laughs> guitar noises! <laughs> okay, I can't actually play guitar anyway, so it's fine that it's not being picked up. There's, but, a, there's a bard in a tavern that's yes, his first Yes, our game. bard. He's learning. Who introduces himself as Cal. As Cal. Uh, he totally, you have to bear with me, use your imagination here. Mm -hmm. um, he can do a lot of things that I can't, such as play the flute and have a band accompany him. And, uh, <laughs> you know, all this might have been nice to try to do uh, with extra work, but nah. Uh, and he can also sing. So flute. just, is you're just gonna have to like, have you. just try to, uh, try to imagine what I'm going for more than what you're actually hearing. Okay. <laughs> all right. Good evening, lords and ladies. Okay, okay, winding down. We're going to have one last tale of our favorite hero and the party of companions he found while exploring the wild lands of young Ladaria. At this time, they were lost, fugitives even. But by the end of this little adventure, the, our group of runaways would become champions of the realm. It begins in the flying city of the elves, Dimblilon. For those who don't know the tales, we'll begin by introducing this merry band. There was a great, strong, hairy man who towers eight feet tall, and all who crossed his glowing blade were surely doomed to fall. Pontifex, the old blue wizard, justly cunning and insane, with the lightning in his fingertips, villains know to fear the rain. Pip, the child bound by noose, was risen from the dead. The demon rat, he made his pet with the soles of his head. With the souls of his foes is fed, yes. <laughs> then Tekka, sage and mysterious, said to whisper to the land, yet moves like wind, swift and true. He once fought a lion with his bare hands. And finally, our wayward hero, a fawn boy nurturing his art. Is he pious or just a thief? Either way, he's sure to steal your heart. <laughs> this ragtag band of five set out to the magic tree of dreams seeking answers each their own. But this quest was more than it had seemed. Yes, this quest was more than it had seemed. <laughs> For all the while, as they trekked across the hills and into strange magical lands, in the shadows skulked a great villain, their nemesis, the wretched Saskarin. 
Wicked eyes, blows like knives, twisted mind split in twain. Horrid breath, smells like death, his temper unrestrained. Some say there was once good in him, a lingering memory of love. But that was tossed away the day that push came to shove. He pushed his friend off a cliff. Puss and horns, closed the door with teeth, hair, and bones. Fat back from hell itself, ever wandering on his own. Plotting, watching, living on the fringe. Beaming, dreaming, only of revenge. Saw Scarin was indeed devious, and clever enough to know that he could not best our her heroes in a fair fight. Thus he watched from afar. Below the, below the shaded canopy, as our heroes laid beneath the great tree, and waited for sleep to take them. At last the sun fell, and our heroes crossed into the world of dreams. Thus Scarin, having prepared a poisoned dagger, began to approach. With deathly silent steps, he drew ever closer, his hand quivering, as he anticipated his first strike against the sleeping half-elf. The hunched figure took his final step, now bearing down on the handsome hero. And just as he raised his blade, in swept an immense creature, a great, winged, scaled beast. It was Talix's friend, Ollie, the great Pangolin, king of the Ladarian dragons. <laughs> With a mighty crash and a swish of his tail, he sent Saskaran tumbling down the hillside and roared. Wretched creature, never shall you step on to this hallowed soil. For your crimes, you have been banished from the realm of dreams. If ever you are to look upon this tree again, your blood will boil. Thus is your curse. Now leave, or you shall bathe in flames. Defeated, Saskaran fled, and all he returned to greet our heroes in their prophetic dream. It was there they were given their greatest quest, a perilous journey into the west. But that must wait for another song, for when they return to the city of Simli Long, their ambitions were interrupted by a horrid sight, and on none other than Deliverance Night. One, two hundred bodies, still as the summer night, dress faint as a dying light, trapped in magical slumber, Charmed by Malibet Umber. I can't actually do low notes. <laughs> Umber, yes. <laughs> ah. There is only one creature capable of this sort of devilry, proclaimed Talix. <laughs> Ever knowledgeable of the arcane, this plucky yet sharp tongued elf boy immediately understood the situation. So, Skellen! He stole the Dream Tree's magic and is using it to trap these poor folks in an eternal nightmare. Upon hearing the revelation, the others gasped. Pip cried out, But, but will they wake up? That's what he sounds like. We must put a stop to this wicked spell at once. If we don't act fast, they may never escape. Oh no, cried Pontifex. And the others said something or other, but Touts quickly silenced them as he caught a strange scent. Ever in tune with nature. This admittedly sometimes oafish, but in a charming way, pointedly eared sweet fritter in the shape of a man, noticed the change in the wind, and with it the stench of their half-devil adversary. Above all, the city's towers floated something new, a fortress in the sky built upon the back of a massive metal wyvern! Sneering <laughs> over the edge of the highest turret was the twisted face of Saskaran, who jeered, You'll never escape me now, Talix Moyer of Sovine! Today is the day you will all perish! Then all the dream world shall be mine to rule! <laughs> Nay, it is you who shan't escape this time, Saskaran! We will free these innocent folk from your wretched curse! At that, the party of heroes grabbed onto Talix's arms, and with a single mighty leap, suddenly there were hundreds of feet in the air bearing down upon the roof of Saskaran's castle. <laughs> Just as the heroes reached the crest of their flight, Talix pointed a single mighty finger into the sky, and at his call, heavy storm clouds began to gather. Ready yourself, Professor! cried Talix. Oh. 
Oh, and um, after my last performance of this particular tale, a certain helpful source wanted me to add a couple of clarifications here because apparently he thought when I gave him this heroic moment I was overdoing things. So, um, the five heroes, as they were all equally, uh, each contributed to the fight using their respective expertise. <laughs> Brooke with his mighty sword, Tekka with his swift punches, Pip with his creepy stuff, and then, with a crack, the heavens split! Took it back, the fiend remits, just before he was fried to shit. A <laughs> mighty bolt of lightning from the gods sealed our hero's triumph against all odds! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna clap, but I have to hold my push to talk! I'll clap I didn't know back. how we were gonna get out of that one! <laughs> Brooke explained, and honestly, he had a point. No matter, it is done now, said Talix. We must take this villain to face justice at the hands of the proper authorities, as no true hero would take on the role of vigilante, he probably added at the time. But just as Tekka began to respond with something mysterious, they all felt a strange pull from below their feet. Surely enough, the great metal wyvern was plunging from the sky. It seemed the lightning had fried its electrically powered engine. It was then that a new face, a gnomish woman by the name of Grinjana, who was previously piloting this enormous construct, emerged from a hatch. But what came of all that, we'll have to wait for the next performance. Thus concludes the tale of Talix's tree troop and Saskaran's sinister sleep spell. <laughs> Thank you all for... Oh, wait. Terribly sorry. Sorry, there was one more thing to add at the end of this tale, because words can be so easily plopped into performances at one swims. Okay, here's one little addendum that I did not write, to be clear. A little clarification about our villains. Um, Saskaran, his tale was a tragedy. Born of two peoples who were enemies. His, uh, he was just trying to get back to his home. But because of his past, he was trapped there alone. Uh, be not so quick to judge the value of others, cause beneath our skin we are all of us br Okay, you get it. <laughs> anyway, so that was fun. Uh, tomorrow we will see the heroes manage to glide to safety. But how? A little teaser, it involves a bit of gnomish engineering and Talix removing his shirt. Enjoy the night, everyone! <laughs> That's it! Yes! <laughs> yes! <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I hope you could imagine that the way I want you to. <laughs> Jason, let me I just, just say... imagine Jason singing to himself in an office, so this is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> let me just say, as a theater major, I am so proud of you. <laughs> you you took us through an exploration of five different genres of music. <laughs> there was some he was radio counting? theater in there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, no, that was all a normal bardic, uh, like classic medieval <laughs> feeling. Uh, yeah. I like the transition between folk song to screamo hard rock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, that's just how, that's just how bards used to tell folk stories. Folk song to Tenacious D real fast. <laughs> yeah, I might have been channeling a little bit of that. <laughs> yeah, of I, I, did have, I did have kind of that energy in the back of my mind as I was writing, because it was like the only way I could get myself to like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just think, what would Jack, how would Jack Black describe? <laughs> but yeah, how would Jack Black describe his exploits? That's how this part is going to describe Talix. That was great. That was, that was definitely in my head. I mean, Austin channel BDG. I channel. Yeah. <laughs> you you got it. <laughs> yeah, no, I I got the unraveled thing. I wanted to say it, but I I forgot to mention it. Here's your yeah. inspiration for. I don't even know if we can call these uh, recaps anymore. All right. It's more like re. Hold on, the bard's name. The, the bard's name is Kel. We're gonna call it Kelspiration. Brooke used his sword sure. and Tekka punched things and Pip did creepy stuff. And then back to the other two. <laughs> the sky split. The <laughs> yes. <and> yes. <laughs> the I, I hope I wasn't too subtle with what I was trying to do. <laughs> I love it. It was I hope you got the exactly energy. Exactly what happened. They okay. did equal stuff. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to go you. back tomorrow to hear about uh, Talix's shirtless torso. There better well, be good. a sequel. We have a recap <laughs> next week. Ooh.
<laughs> yeah, it's your job again, Jason. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Elsa. We can have an afterwards too. You're not canonically <laughs> obligated to remove Talix's shirt at some point. Find a good reason. I mean. <laughs> Didn't we already have a bathing scene in like session five or something? Yeah, but, but the villains part there. I don't That's hear anyone complaining about the Witcher having two of them. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. I think as many Geralt in the bathtub scenes as they can possibly shill in there, the, the viewer base would be fine with it. So, I think it works. Did something break? I, I heard, uh, I heard like not glass pack. break. It's some <laughs> custom model. <laughs> I, yeah, I said, do not pack. And I'm like, okay, I don't Custom know. Custom model, 397DE3. <laughs> it's, I, I'm sure that house it was not important. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, the, the, the possum, the, the fox, the, the dragon wagon, and the goat boat are all good. Yeah. <laughs> and we're just making sure that like nothing horrible the, is missing. The fox box had to be recently demolished and... Because of recent news. <laughs> I mean, alchemies oh, also, and alcohols are still standing, <laughs> so the gnome box. is still around. Also, in our otherwise, uh, to a T, perfect uh, recount of everything that occurred last session, uh, the bard did forget to mention that uh, Tekka is unconscious along with Saskarin, and they're going <laughs> on, a, on a little spirit journey together with Erebos right now. <laughs> His you know, name isn't Erebos, I should stop saying that. Well, we I actually didn't know that his together. Name <laughs> that Saskaren is walking with Tekka. I didn't put that together, that Tekka is also unconscious and they're doing dream stuff. I thought this was like some weird vision of the future. So I feel really <laughs> well done. Thank you for pointing that out to me. Yeah, yeah, they're both unconscious. It's like the thing that happened with, uh, with Tekka yeah. and the other two. The, no, the, it completely the makes sense now. I was thinking this is going to be a way more impactful thing and Matt has just <laughs> discovered some kind of secret. <laughs> I kind of, well, we'll see. I, a lot could happen here. This is Tekka's no, chance to... I, I feel to much better charts. about this now. Pawn effect suddenly remembers, oh yeah, he's unconscious and is now significantly less suspicious of Tekka than he was five minutes prior. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well. <clears throat> I hope my mic clipped for at least 50% of that. Only twice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, well then, uh, speaking of. Uh, eh, hold on, volumes. Eh. Okay. So, Tekka, mm -hmm. you awaken in the middle of a crowded village you don't recognize. The architecture of the buildings that surround you reminds you of the Plurnan towns, but the houses here look older than any of the freshly founded colonies on the peninsula. Far in the distance, you see the largest tree you've ever seen, and everything clicks in your mind. You sit up, feeling the cold paved road beneath you. And despite the knowledge that this place, this vision, isn't uh, ex exactly real, your body seems normal, solid, alive. Up ahead, sitting on a bench, uh, no more than 20 feet away from you, you see a now familiar white-haired elf lift his eyes from the book he was reading and uh, meet yours. He waits for a few seconds <clears throat> before slamming the book shut, straightening his posture and addressing you. Welcome back, Tekka. How long will you stay with me today? Seconds? Minutes? I do not know, but not for long. He waits for a little bit. Almost, um, you, you feel like he's expecting that from just one moment to the next you might be gone, but as he stares at you for, for longer, uh, you're still here. He stands up. Uh, he gestures for you to also stand, and he says, Shall we take a walk? Let's. I have questions. You claim yourself a god. Last time we spoke. Do you still claim 
this. As the drow uh, man, uh, the moment you, you stand up and you ask the question, he does a small gesture. He almost looks like he's um, grabbing onto an invisible curtain and pulling it aside. And as you you follow, uh, you look in the direction he's looking, and you see entire buildings moving aside, sliding across the road, making uh, a way for the two of you. And as he begins to walk, he simply says, What else would I be? Ordinary. But I see you hold control of this place. It is mine. I have made it. Every little detail, every blade of grass, every pebble, the clouds in the sky, the sun. Although uh, the inspiration comes from elsewhere, but this is mine. You are the only thing who isn't. For your visitors past, did you decide their key, their way here? Do you understand it? I only understand that which I make. That would be most people. Those who show up like you, though. I do not know what uh, what goes on with you, where you come from, what you have done. I did not know your name until you spoke it. Every time I have visited you here, it has been through harm. Until I lose my bearing, I sleep there, I wake here. If you control this, you must know why. What links me here? I fear I do not have an answer, though I do have a, an hypothesis. Um, state. As he lifts a hand, and again, this is like almost shoving motion, and a cloud moves out of the way. You were under its shade for a moment, and the sun is shining again over you. As it continues, the two of you continue to walk, there's people that uh, move past you. None of them ever acknowledging you, none of them speak. They just walk silently. None of them are holding anything or moving in, in groups. There's just individuals walking in the opposite direction compared to yours. None of them moving with you. The drow crosses his arms and there's this... Hmm. Roll an inside check. All right. The man seems to be enjoying the conversation far more than anyone should. Um, this, uh, this feels like it is the highlight of his day. Maybe his week or uh, who knows what stretch of time he has spent between uh, your last visit and this one. He doesn't look any different. But there is still this sense that he is different in some way that you cannot grasp. Ah, after giving it uh, some consideration, the drow provides an answer. If it is suffering that brings you here, perhaps I am the god of suffering. Th 
then do you suffer in this world you have created? The only pain I have ever felt is pain that I have inflicted upon myself out of curiosity. I cannot say I enjoyed it. If I were to mend my statement based on what you just said, then perhaps I am the god of boredom. Then I represent the uncertain to you. Do you welcome me, or do you fear me? If it were up to me, I would never let you go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I shit. <laughs> Yet you know I will go. Yet we may meet again. I have one request for you. I have been given a task. Who has given you this task? My new home wishes to speak with gods. So it seems you are one of those. Can you leave your home to meet them? If I am able to, I have yet to figure out how. I have never been anywhere that I haven't made. But you know how to come here. Why don't you bring them here? They are invited. I don't know whether that journey can be made. Until then at the we very meet least. Again, will you try leaving? this place that much I can promise you I am curious to see what is beyond the boundaries of my world it's um it's at this moment as uh, the drow once again moves some houses out of the way and this village is beginning to feel endless you're walking and walking but it doesn't feel like you're heading anywhere you're not uh, um seeing any landmarks the more you look at these houses the more they all look the same and as more of the buildings part to make way of you you spot ahead a familiar sight the road ah, about 50 feet from you is overrun with a giant green plant its long roots wrapped around entire buildings and as you approach the plant withers and dies before your eyes, turning into nothing but dust. No longer blocking your view, you see only one unusual thing left behind. The unconscious body of Saskarin. The stranger just walking uh, alongside you uh, tilts his head to the side and simply says, Huh. He is new. Not new to me. Oh, is he a Parched, friend of yours? Part of my way here. No friend. Based on uh, the slight shift in the expression of the stranger, um, it seems to... Uh, t he seems curious about this. He seems interested about your statement. Um... <clears throat> and as he approaches, uh, takes a few more steps, Saskarin blinks and sits up and looks around. Um, and then recognizing you, Tekka, he, there is a, a, a small shriek that, that escapes his, his throat and he pulls himself backward a little bit. 
I will not harm you. This place will not either. The man beside you says, well, I, I could. Not planning to, though. And, um, uh, Saskarian considers what the two of you, uh, just said. He stands up on, uh, shaky knees and, uh, the man with you keeps on walking, moves past him, and as Saskarian turns to, to, to look at him, uh, he also turns back and says, well, come with us. And without a word, uh, bent forward uh, with his hand uh, uh, on the side of his face to, to like cover the right line of sight between you and him, says Karen begins to follow the two of you. Um, the, the stranger has questions for you now, Tekka. And, uh, um... Mm, okay. He says, Tell me about this home of yours. I have not seen it. I have heard it. I have felt it. It is far, far away. Further than I have ever walked in my steps. Have you and built that it? Is my journey. I have not. curious you have a home but what happened did others make it for you I was never given the chance to see it until now so now I will walk until I find it. then I can help build it These conversations with little godlings such as yourself are so intriguing. I don't understand what kind of world you live in. One where you somehow are unaware of its properties. Doesn't that scare you? Mm, I embrace the uncertainty of things. Many things were decided before I arrived in the, that world. But now I make moves to change it, to form it. But many things were decided It seems, were you always able to mold your world to your like? It is the only world I've ever known. There is nothing but my own will. Huh? Then we can learn much from each other different stories to tell the drow nods and uh, he smiles and that smile again feels it's unusual almost uh, inhuman it lacks the emotions that should accompany a smile like that. It's its a strangely just, uh, it's almost mechanical. But it's a smile. And that 
sense that he genuinely enjoys the conversation that's taking place is still there. Um, feeling the footsteps of Saskarian getting a little bit quieter, you you turn to see that uh, Ayaz yes, began to wander off. Approaching an alleyway and disappearing in one. The drow doesn't doesn't uh, draw any attention to that. He uh, uh, new. <laughs> sorry. He uh, seems slightly disappointed, but uh, doesn't even comment on it. Uh, and he said he gestures in the opposite direction, in a uh, towards uh, a building to your right, uh, and uh, that's where you see a tiefling, um, a man that looks very similar to your to you, but more like it's like if uh, it, it kind of hits you. It's a you that's been made from memory. It looks similar, but not similar enough to you. And as uh, the, the stranger points at this figure, he says, Ah, I made this one. What do you think? It is not me. But I can see hearts. No, I suppose it can never be you. Oh, that's the annoying part. None of these ever tell me anything I don't already know. You do, though. With your permission, may I ask for more stories? Another time. I have... A life to live. Then I may have more stories to tell if I arrive here again. Two visits, both times you are in a rush. It's a little disappointing, but that's also what's so fascinating about your godlings. I cannot control your will, so if you wish to leave, then leave. Yeah, Tekka will, with that, kind of look around to see if he can find some scary. Uh, okay, you can roll uh, an investigation check. All right. You, um, you backtrack, you retrace your steps to the alleyway where you saw Karen disappear in, um, and uh, he's not there, but you traverse it, you end up in a different part of town that feels horribly familiar. Almost feels like you just went back the way you just came from, but, ah, uh, that wouldn't make any sense. And you ask around, if anyone has seen, uh, uh, well, the description of Saskarian is quite unique, and uh, you haven't seen anyone like him of all the people who have walked past <coughs> you today. But uh, every time you're trying to interact with somebody, they just ignore you. Sometimes they make eye contact, you feel like you're being seen, but uh, nobody answers your questions. Most of the time, they just resume walking in the direction that we're going. Sometimes they resume walking in the wrong direction. You give up. You give up on asking around, and you just rely on your own hearing and sight to uh, figure out where you might have gone. And as soon enough, you spot a figure further up ahead, smaller than most. You recognize that cloak he's wearing, the way he's walking around, slightly hunched forward. 
He's just a bit further up ahead compared to you, but he could easily catch up. Stop. Um, you you call out. Uh, Saskarin uh, jumps, surprised by by the sound of uh, uh, a voice he would rather not be hearing right now, uh, and he starts running. Runs after. I uh, yeah, you are <laughs> faster than him. <laughs> just <laughs> just your base. Just mug things. <laughs> Um, wait, no, you aren't. Oh, <gasps> you are not. Ooh. Uh, your speed is ideally equal. <laughs> it's going off memory, but you I'm going to check the set block. Uh, <laughs> uh, but can he dash as a bonus action? <laughs> Get super mad. Actually. Well, okay, so if he dashes, <laughs> bonus, he dashes both a bonus action and an action in one turn as a monk? Yeah. So it actually does let you... Yeah, you can action dash and then step speed. of the wind dash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rogues okay. can do something similar. Yeah, rogues okay. can just do it infinitely. Monks um, have to spend key points, but yeah. Huh. But as for Saskarin, he can do this indefinitely. Um, Spooky. And uh, Tekka, as you rush, as you run after him, um, there is this weird sense of um, of a lack of progress. Sometimes you look around and despite the fact that you're running, it feels more like you're running in place. The buildings aren't really moving past you. And sometimes when you're not paying attention, you feel like you are moving across great distances, far faster than uh, normally you would be able um, of running. But... Saskarian stays out of your reach at all times until you feel yourself getting tired, but not tired of, of running. It's not your legs that are hurting. Um, it's this weird sensation across your entire body that's feeling cold, and then it's feeling extremely hot. And you open your eyes. Oh, well, we're going to backtrack just a little bit uh, because... Tech and Saskarin are unconscious for uh, a long while still, and the rest of the group are uh, currently in their little room in the tavern, along with uh, um, a, a gnome that's just uh, uh, sitting up against the, against the door of the room. Uh, and is there anything you guys want to do while uh, the two of them are still out? Damn it, Sasuke. Uh... <laughs> Damn it, Sass Karen. <laughs> now that's the only way I can hear it. So, um... I kind of forgot what we said. So, okay. Professors probably against their brains. We already kind of resolved that. What else did we need to do tonight? Brooke needs to do something, talk to... I thought I can bring him to the phantom. Okay. Or I said I can look for him. That's, yeah, 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 I mean, I can, I said, or I offered to look if any phantoms are here. And then the professor asked me to stay in case he wakes up. Uh, okay. Pip, Pip goes to one of the sheets of the bed and starts uh, ripping right. a strip of it off. And once he gets a, a long strip of fabric, he uh, goes up to, to Saskarin and, and uh, puts it in his mouth and starts tying it around his head as sort of a gag. Okay. Pep, uh, you've been collecting parts of this fellow. Uh, by any chance, do you have a means of tracking him if he gets away from us? He thinks for a moment, and then mm -mm, shakes his head. I think that's what I would like to figure out. 
whatever we end up doing with him has an extra bit of security. If we could somehow keep tabs on him. Especially... Do we want to f try to figure out where this home of Orms is? Maybe that's how we can figure out whatever the book isn't telling us now. It's been quiet, obviously, since the revelation. I mean, it probably won't hurt to find out where the home is. So let's try that, maybe? We can figure out. I mean, Orm's obviously connected with Jamil somehow, despite the mix-up. Figuring out whatever secrets this book holds still can help us figure out whatever Jamil's gotten our soul into here. Maybe... Maybe this is the key to taking us there. He knows where to go. And he wants to take the book there. Talix is now a little awkward trying to figure out the vibe <laughs> of everyone else. After um, is it Talix currently in a... Uh, uh, the book is currently in Talix's possession, yeah? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because the whole thing happened with, uh, with him. I mean, yeah, Talix yeah, will go ahead and open it. Oh. Unless you want to tell Throw us something. The is there something we need to know, or are you going to speak to us, please? please? Um. All right, brace yourselves. Ah. Oh, my God, is he going to speak? <laughs> oh, back <and> up. <laughs> <laughs> It would be very cruel uh, if, if she here. did all of this just for her to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, she just, like, Nothing happens. <laughs> oh, look, it's blank. <laughs> she uses her emoji powers it's to give us blank. the double birds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. I, uh, everyone. Um, the, as, as the party uh, just collects themselves in a circle. Uh, Gringina also stands up and comes over and tries to, uh, she climb onto the bed to try to gain some height and see what's going on while you're all gathered. I kind of forgot you were here, Gringina. Lightning! Spook me! Uh, uh, Ah, uh, you guys don't want me to be here. Is the vibe I'm getting? Uh, can you go in the corner and polish your gun for a bit? <laughs> You're very perceptive for a gnome. <laughs> <laughs> How intuitive. Um, Respectfully. <laughs> Regina just like throws her hands up in the in the air and she says, "No, it's it's fine. I'm gonna go." Outside. Ah, ah. She's getting passive aggressive. Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, somebody should probably speak with the governor if he's still alive. Uh, is it okay if I do that? Are you oh. going to throw lightning, lightning at me if I do that? No, uh, I, I was hoping to do that myself, but yeah, if you know where to, how to get a hold of him, uh, send him our way. Uh, yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I can. I can probably do that. I think. Okay. All right. Thank um, you, Grandina. Thank you I'll so much. I'll see you later when you. you're not uh, feeling like frying me. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Uh, she can read my uh, eyes. Brook. <laughs> what? You are the original gnome racist. <laughs> if you can change, maybe even the professor can change. <laughs> That's chance. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, uh, Gringina looks at, at, at Brooke and just smiles awkwardly and grabs her things, uh, and she, <laughs> she leaves, she leaves the room. Um, the rest of you watch as the, as ink, uh, forms, shapes, letters, uh, on the, on the blank pages of this book, and, um, this hasn't happened in a couple of days, but, uh, it, the book begins to, to speak to you once more. 
Well, the letters appear. Can I also keep an eye for says Karen not waking up? I think he's still bound as well. Yeah. And it's pig oh. that gagged him. But yeah, oh, okay. I mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can you can just like uh, have yeah, one eye on the book, one eye on, on him, just sitting around. Mostly, I just wanted to sure. make sure that we remembered that. I, I'm pretty sure we bound him. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Who's the bound one now? <laughs> ah. Uh. Right. Sorry about the lightning, but uh, you know, all the same. Interesting. Um, we. I think have a lot of questions and I'm not quite sure where to begin. Where, where do we be on everyone? Can you repeat that? Oh, where, where do we begin? Uh, I mean... Uh, how about with you? Who, who are you? Definitively. It's not dog. a metal man? Mm -hmm. And the sheepdog. Sheepdog. Uh, oh, this raises all sorts of questions. Wait, you're J Jamil's companion. Pip's eyes go wide at this and, and he unravels the dog tags out of his hair and sort of jingle jingles them in front of the book. Is there a bookmark on this book? Um, it's sort of a ribbon bookmark, maybe? There... Uh, yes, there's multiple bookmarks. None of them point at anything. They they all point at blank pages, but they are distributed across the book. Um, we'll just one of them perhaps of them was loose. yeah sure uh, and tie the dog tags to it. <laughs> and then like so so they're dangling from the book. Mm -hmm.
That's nice. I think in the present moment, we should ask about that fellow on the ground there. You said Saskaran killed you. Yeah, you, you told us he pushed you in when we thought you were Jamiel. So he was with you. We recently had a similar experience with it. Saskaran. He changed. Uh, my hypothesis about that, what he is, is seeming more and more plausible. Pip, uh, Pip pulls a length of hair uh, out of his head and begins to grab the pe one of the, the, the pebble that the Lady of the Land gave him in his pouch and starts um, sort of wrapping them together and then hands the stone to Talix. And Talix, you hear him in your head. Could, could you ask Fluffy how he got in the book? Um, Pep here wants to know, uh, just really, uh, why, why are you the one in the book? What happened there? How did you get in the book? He could speak well, to you. Eh, this sounds like things that uh, that Pip and I can do respectively. And like the Atarla. Um, I, I thought that he said that Orm was the metal man. Who's the metal man? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing as I earlier that question.
That seems awfully confusing. <laughs> um, that has to mean something. Uh, from what I have seen, uh, if seen is the right word, of uh, how Jemuel was, uh, I seem to recall him uh, treating you, uh, the companion, a little uh, less than good, mentioned things about you messing things up again and not wanting you to bring, or to bring you on these important uh, missions of his or some such, so... He's a jaded oh. little man. Perhaps it is some sort of irony to name his uh, pet after his enemy. Was he really so mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your uh, honestly, your literary skills are quite impressive, considering you. Most of your life without language. Who reads? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know Ladarian animals are strikingly intelligent. Uh, I guess this just goes to show the extent of it. So Pip is speaking to me now. Has he at any point shared? Pip knows where he is, but mm? what Saskaren is. Ah. Right? Or was it just Squeak that knew? Does Pip also know? Uh, Pip and Squeak share a mental connection, so it probably was relayed at some point. Well, you're not going to share it? Uh, he He may share it. Probably not right at this moment, though. Okay. Well, he seemed to... I don't know. Seemed to be... Uh, fickle. <laughs> Maybe he thought that was gonna get him home somehow. Oh. <laughs> huh. What favor? Who did this? <laughs> Me. <laughs> well, I actually thought that you did that. <laughs> He's learning to dog emoji. Oh. Samuel, the more terrified I am of him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have further motivation to find him. Uh, instead of just helping Telex or claiming my pre-ordered copy of the Outlander's Guide to Ladaria, published by <laughs> Jamuel Fleetfoot, uh, I've come to know that he knew my parents, which I never have. 
Well, that is a strange level of coincidence. I have questions. I can understand that. <laughs> This, uh, wherever this Saskaran fellow wants to take you to, do you know where it is? And do you think it's in any way connected with Chamuel? He said he wanted to take it to his friend. That's Orm. That's the metal man. the other arm. Well, that throws things off. I guess I was still piecing that together. Do, do you still want us to call you Orm, or what? Oh, no. Wait. Okay. Uh, the, the, our Onan book friend here is Orm. And the metal man can just be the metal man. Or O T H. What what's the T H stand for? Pit fishes Orm. out the metal pieces from his backpack. Uh, Orm the, the metal man. The metal man. <laughs> <laughs> Orm the metal. He oh. tried to kill oh. the metal. It's nice of him for him to initial his murder machines. <laughs> <laughs> he must take great pride in his work. Classic villain mistake move. Henhart. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's snappy, easy to remember. Okay, so this one's Orm, the other one's Tenhart. Easy. That's a good question. Well, I was contemplating, although I feel much less certain about this now. I was contemplating, uh, sorry to say, uh, sort of using you as uh, bait, <laughs> in a way, <laughs> or worse, but with every intention of getting you back. But I'm not even sure if that's a good idea anymore. That was when I thought maybe who you were had some connection to wherever he was taking you. But if that if that orm is different from you, maybe there's no reason to do that. I was only trying to figure out what was going on. If we might not want to meet this other orm. And I'd certainly want to get the rest of your inputs before we did anything so brash. What do we do with the Woken Saskarin? I can get a lot of good information from him, I think. But it would be best if we could do it tomorrow. I'm... I'm still not at my best. I don't feel like keeping a prisoner overnight. Especially one so unpredictable. Can um... We... Brooke, I, I don't remember if you went over this last session, but you do know that the, the, the Phantom's headquarters beneath the city do have um, prisons with the Can't Stop Magic. Dennis? I'm sorry, I had to get up. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> I didn't expect you to sit down for this. 
<laughs> you sit down and all you hear is Dennis? <laughs> yeah. What did uh, you want from me? <laughs> I said, I don't remember if we went over this last session, but you do know that the, the Phantom Headquarters beneath, uh, beneath the city do have prisons that cancel out magic. Huh. We were well, just talking about what to do with Seskir. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, if I can only only... there was somewhere we could put him overnight. I don't <laughs> know. I mean, if we don't, then I guess we'd have to do something here. Yeah, it would be even more convenient <clears throat> if it was a place that could manage magic. <laughs> and well... if it was possible that, like, the magic <laughs> only worked one way so that he couldn't move, but we could still do magic, then that would be great. Dennis, not that. <laughs> well, just as a place to keep him overnight, it wouldn't really have to be that. We could always just ask to have someone hold him, and then next morning. I mean, I can offer the same thing over to you before, right? I have to see if any of the other phantoms are here currently, and then they can take care of Seskarin over the night. Are you up for doing that tonight? Uh. I mean, at worst case, if nobody is here, uh, I guess I'll have to do that. I can, uh, I can bandage up your wounds before you go. That would be great. Just, you, you are sort of bleeding all over the floor here, so. <laughs> Don't worry, so are most of us. Well, yeah. Um... <laughs> I can't even remember he, what I actually hit. He's holding up his arm <laughs> where, where he cut himself <laughs> to be bandaged up. All right, tell us to start working on that. And um, I have a little something for you guys. What? what? Is it candy? Uh, no, it's is not it candy. Is it a picture of a dog? I suppose, no. Uh, I suppose I'll just, well, it is, we'll put this on Talix's side of the table, I suppose, and uh, or... Wherever, where it's more convenient, but um, uh, now that uh, Orm, the wool dog, has recovered all of his memories, uh, um, he can help you in new ways that he didn't have access to before, uh, <gasps> as he ha as your your magic item uh, has officially gained a level. <gasps> oh. The book you hold in your hands, the only known copy of the Outlander's Guide to Ladaria, contains a soul ready to offer his help to you. Nana Dorm has recovered his memories, he has begun to awaken to his potential, and will assist you however he can. Uh, and in the following pages, look how fancy this, this card is. Oh, I like Neat. it. Um, I need to steal this. There is uh, three features currently available. Oh! Oh, two temporary hit points uh -huh. for lots of people. He's a bard dog. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, for five of us, that's 10 temp HP. Pretty cool. Ooh. 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 Cool. Uh. Oh, I, we should. Okay. I so there's, there's like a 95% chance if he fails that spell, that the knowledge is unrecoverable? It is unrecoverable through this feature. Through this feature, oh, okay. yeah. Uh, just <laughs> as like... uh, he has been slowly uncovering things in that, uh, you know, in what uh, outer mm -hmm. game is that Google Doc with like explanation yeah. about races and such, um, he will probably recover that information over time no this promises like a, though ask a ladaria question roll a d20 if it's a and nat 20 then he knows my, it. otherwise and destroy my plot again. yes yeah this yeah. is like this is going beyond the information that we should have like this is okay Hero. cool oh oh that's helpful oh. Huh. Well, we no longer need Talix. That solves a lot of problems. <laughs> right, that, yeah, that's good because, you know, I'm still going to go see the Atarva and Varianthar, so there's lots of chances that I get uh, removed. 
Get removed. <laughs> get removed. So it's it's removed good to have that. Yeah. Yeah, Yay. your pirate breakfast is coming up we'll, sooner, right? We'll just like, can we attach it to the? Wait, what is the? No. What is the second state on this? Oh. I love Orm. <laughs> He looks so dirty. Can oh, we oh. keep him? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh. Just set it on that. Nice. Yeah, suppose if he gets one, then. You wanna... Here. I, I, you, wanna, you wanna play with the dog? <laughs> Can you ask him if he wants oh. some of his bones, too? <laughs> you wanna chew on your own bones, little guy? Oh. <laughs> That's... I could attach them to the other bookmarks. It's just a convenient place to. Keep I think them. this is, I think this is part of the ear. <laughs> Are there bones in the ear? Uh, not on the outside. <laughs> is everyone on board with uh, bringing Siskarin uh, to the, well, to leaving Siskarin in Brooke's care? Well, Let him figure it out. Well, right now Brooke is setting out. Oh, what's this? Who wrote that? That's the answer to the oh, question. Oh, to the part of the bones. Okay. <laughs> no. He does not want <laughs> to like, munch his own bones. Did she uh, ask an answer? Just to clarify, I don't take him with me immediately, right? I just want to check first. Yeah, if just in there. make sure. Yeah, and we should try to get a beat on the town also. Uh, I so should, I if, I, if I separate off, I should probably leave this thing with one of you, right? Oh, good points. Uh, professor? Oh, too much power. Okay. I've, I've had my, I've had my turn. <laughs> oh. Oh, I can't unlock the bowl. Oh, right, he's still unconscious. I can't give it. No. Nope. He's got the book now. <laughs> Goes to the professor. Okay. Uh, sure, uh, but I want the bowl. <laughs> yeah, I can't, can't give you the bowl. It's part of me. It's oh, you hard. Hard. <laughs> 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 oh, no. We'll play the it's shell game for the seed. Oh yeah, okay, you missed that earlier. <clears throat> that, that's pretty much what was happening. That's why I got locked. <laughs> Before I go to the headquarters, I need a second though. Um. Okay, what else do we need to resolve right now? Players. Uh, I suppose you're waiting for Regina to bring the governor here. Squeak back from the beat. Mm. Sorry, what was that, Matt? And we had to recover Squeak from the beach. I oh, see. right. Oh, tell, tell I'm sorry. Here. I don't have what I need for that. What do you need? You don't hear it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, Alex is gonna oh. relay everything. Yeah. I know. <laughs> he doesn't have what he needs. I, I don't want to say everything twice. Okay. I know, I know. I know. I it's like, Austin is just being mean. Look here, you little shit. What do you need? <laughs> I need... Well, I need incense and herbs and the blood of an orphan. Oh, well, aren't you an orphan? I think that's what he was getting Yeah. Well, so you just use your own, yes? He's being coy. In a, you know, sort of... Uh, Horrifying way. <laughs> you, you frightening little scamp, you. <laughs> um. So tomorrow, we go shopping. Uh, I believe the day after tomorrow, I'm supposed to meet with the Atarva. Back on the day. Ah, you said in a week. A uh, seven days from whenever that encounter was. Is that? So it's will that be tomorrow. two days or three? Oh it's my tomorrow. god! <laughs> no! <laughs> wait, 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 let me check the calendar. I thought, Did it I happen thought we arrived. After you spent... It happened on the day we arrived. It on the day you arrived? arrived? Okay, right? so it is the day after tomorrow. <sighs> I, I had been going over that over the past week. <laughs> okay. Then yeah? So, uh, probably gonna have to be going soon. Oh, I really was not planning on being gone so long. Or any of this. <laughs> okay. Alright. Uh, Brooks. Someone... 
Oh, never mind. What was that? Do you want someone to come with you, Talix, to meet the Atarva? I, I still have that girl's blood that I can use. <laughs> oh. You know, if things go south, I can... You I can terrifying you her... little scamp. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you her, her deepest and darkest fears. A good tool to have, I suppose. We don't want it to go like, uh, well, everything on that tower went. Okay. But we have so much more to do. Um, yeah, I was gonna ask. Brooke said he needed to do a thing before he left. Uh, no, did I, I, did I miss what it was? I'm back. I'm back. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it was you who needed it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so we can have you just heading to the to the Phantom's uh, headquarters yeah. for a little bit. Uh, um, to the just, Alchemy and Liquor store. Yeah, just yeah, <laughs> yeah just skip to that. Um, with the store, the store itself. Uh, um, okay, when you leave the tavern, the area outside in the colony, uh, it, it's still quiet. It's still off. Um, most people have, uh, oh, something broke. Oh no, well, it's fine. In Ignore the fact that the two most important towers are missing. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, most people in the roads have woken up or have been taken away, but there's a lot of people just gathered and talking where a lot of people need medical attention. Uh, it's... You've never seen the city uh, like this, any city in a situation like this. It, uh, um, it actually makes you think a little bit back uh, to, to the war. Um, it's the same feeling of, of uneasiness and uh, normal lives being interrupted by something horrible. But you make your way uh, to the secret entrance uh, uh, to the head to the headquarters of the Phantom Guard that uh, only you know, and uh, uh, underground in the tunnels that you know so well, uh, they are quiet too. But that is normal for this place, and uh, you you search for signs of anyone being here. Let me just skip to this. Uh, eventually, it is a Casimir that you find. Surprised a little bit. You thought he would be gone by now on a mission. Uh, he is almost exactly where you left him, left him last time. Uh, on a different chair, sitting on a different chair, a different table, but um, surrounded with more liquor than somebody his size should ever drink in a day uh, and asleep hmm all right i will rush over to him check his breathing see if he has any wounds i'll roll a medicine check core oh boy i broke the script <laughs> oh uh, it's broken. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, Are all the maps lost in the ether? <laughs> no, I love to reload the save, which means you guys will have to readjust your hit points. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. Not like this. Um, this is what I get for making maps are too complex. I'm just gonna do that well. Um, you roll the 19? Okay. Um,. Oh, that will break everything else. Ah, I'll do it during the break. Brooke, it's uh, pretty evident to you by now. Um, he's not passed out because he drank too much. Uh, he's not passed out just because he fell asleep here. Um, he His breathing is really shallow, very slow. It's, uh, um, it's raspy. 
whatever happened to the rest of the city seems to have reached him even all the way down here. Mm. And that's is there all right if i look around is there any chance a healing potion somewhere well you did go through the alchemist's uh, store to uh get in here and uh, um the store itself seemed empty hmm. and you feel like this is not the first time that in an emergency the phantoms had to grab some supplies on the way in and you know pay for them later <clears throat> all right i'll go back and grab small health potion come back and make him drink it mm -hmm. you grab a bottle everything is uh, um uh properly ordered and uh, and labeled you know exactly what to go for uh you grab one only one um <laughs> out of respect and <laughs> knowing that casimir would probably be the one who pays for it anyway um <laughs> and you head back downstairs down through the tunnels you rush up to your uh to your teacher <laughs> finicky crafter drinking in his sleep um you make him smell it at first and as his eyes uh, uh, open ever so slightly, um, you bring the bottle to his lips, you tell him it's beer. Um, you're not sure if that did anything, but he, he does drink a sip uh, and then sits up and finishes the rest of it. Um, and looking much um, better than before, still still uh, groggy, but his breathing is, is normal now. Um, he, he he blinks and looks at you and looks around and says, What? What happened? Uh, it's a very long story. But I guess the short one would be someone put the entire town asleep. And I might have gotten a hold of him. And I need a place for him to stay overnight. You know, one of these cells? <laughs> um... Casimir blinks and he he says no I don't think the the, the short story is going to do here <clears throat> alright I'm down to explain it to you later I just need to know if I can use some and then potentially bring him here because currently he is with us with, um, with my friends he is unconscious, but if he's not unconscious anymore, he's very strong. <laughs> um. And then I can fill you in on everything. Well, as far as I can. Okay, alright. Story story later. Uh, do you need me to carry him? Uh, I think it would be helpful. <laughs> also, right. don't freak out when you come... Just be prepared for what it's outside, okay? When do I feel... ever freak out, Brooke? Um, but like, it, as if in preparation for whatever he's about to see, he grabs uh, a, a a tankard of ale on the way out. <laughs> uh, and sure enough, you you bring him outside and seeing seeing the state of the colony of Sim Leon, he just goes, "What the hell?" And, Remember um, this moment. <laughs> <laughs> you fill him in a little bit uh, uh, on the way, um, <coughs> and you reach the tavern. Uh, the, the the rest of you uh, eventually hear the the very uh, very distinguished footsteps of Brooke uh, um, uh, approaching, and uh, uh, when when he joins you, he's accompanied. Uh, by a halfling uh, that uh, none of you have ever seen before, right? I don't think so. <coughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Aha! I will say hello in Galatan. Or however you pronounce that language from Galtania. Um. Oh god, I. Wasn't ready to bring up his stat block. Eh. 
from most of the halflings live. <laughs> See, I know, I just don't remember where he's from. Ah, sure, that's probably fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, did it say an older halfling? His hair and the mustache have uh, turned green. Uh, he uh, green? What? Gray. Um, he's dressed in, in, in loose clothing. He doesn't have any, uh, any armor on, on him or any, um, any weapons. Uh, all he has with him is an now, uh, empty tankard. Um, he, he looks, he, he's small for his kind and standing next to Brooke, the, the difference is just, uh, uh it's just uh, ridiculous. Uh, and is he? Looks around and uh, uh, says just hi to everyone um, and says hello in, in Galatanian back to Talix. So, um, he looks around and he points at Tekka and he says, that one? Mm, nope. But before that, everyone, this is my teacher, Cass. And this is a group I've been traveling with for the past few weeks. And I point around... In the circle, that's Talix, that's Pip, that's Pontifex. The one you pointed out uh, up or at Azteca, and the other one, and I point at Saskaran, that's the one. Um, Casimir waves at each of you, and uh, he quickly makes sure to let you know that. Uh, whatever Brooke has told you about me, not true. Uh, has Brooke said anything about him? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Talix won't <laughs> divulge that. <laughs> Just kind of. And this, <laughs> um. Kinda, kinda scrawny halfling, uh, just comes over to Siskarin, who's a good, like, entire foot taller than him, and uh, picks him up with ease, as if he, uh, as if he was, uh, just a small cat? Yeah, sure, let's go with that. <laughs> just picks him up, <laughs> um, and, uh, throws him over his shoulder, and, um, uh, kinda, like, he, he turns his head a little bit. Smell uh, like he he smells just loudly and uh, does his like um, uh, disgusted expression. And he addresses Brook again and he says, "This one, just what on his own? Are you sure?" <clears throat> yeah. Okay. No. Right. Tekka is a good guy, not a bad one. Yeah, yeah. Um, good guy, good guy, good guy. He points at each of you and bad guy. Got it. All right, I'll join you in a little bit, okay? Uh, so just to clarify, uh, we'll be able to speak to him in the morning, right? Well, I'll c I can bring him, or we can bring him back here. Okay. Thank you, bro, and thank you. Okay, no cutting off his tongue, got it. <laughs> Is that normal? Yeah, don't worry about it. That's why we're bringing him here. to me. <laughs> Talus does not convey that and just turns to him with like a horrified expression. <laughs> wait, wait, what, what? Holds up a needle. <laughs> oh, no. uh, <laughs> uh, Kazimir just chuckles uh, and uh, says, ah, just joking. Uh, is there anything else I can help you with? If I have any questions, I'll come to you. Okay. Well, you know where to find me. See you in a bit. I want to hear the rest of the story, Brooke. I'll fill you in as much as I can. Don't worry. I do worry, but I'll be patient. 
and he uses his, his free hand to just like slap you in the back. Uh, it just he just hits you the back of one of your knees, which like almost sends you falling down to, to the floor. Uh, you barely catch yourself, and um, the the halfling leaves the tavern. Sometimes I don't understand him. He sees all the wounds I'm in, and he still doesn't hold back. Yeah, he anyway. seems uh, very strong. Oh yeah, very, yeah, very strong. Like you. Believe me, if you, if there's one person on Ladar you don't want to face, it's probably him. Very capable of violence. Well, he's a good guy. Believe you. Right. Are you telling me he is a gnome? Did he look like a gnome to you? I mean, gnome adjacent. <laughs> well, I can tell you the halflings. No, he didn't say that. Halflings I grew up with are halflings. not fans of gnomes. Or any fun from the West, for that matter. Or me. Anyways. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. <coughs> okay. Uh, we should really look more at Tekka. Uh, you said you saw him in, uh, in Saskarin's mind. Oh, uh, yes. It seems they are on some sort of dream jaunt. That's great. Uh, maybe they can... Uh... But yeah, I, I just want to double check and make sure that Tekka isn't dying. <laughs> uh, we haven't really let anyone be out this long before. I've normally been able to bring him back with magic, but... <laughs> the only time it happened, we're, it was Talix himself. <laughs> you, you can't do it. You can't help him either, can you, Professor? Or can you? If I were to have a short rest, I could. A short rest, like an hour. <laughs> a yeah, short rest, yes. Uh, <laughs> it's a thing that uh, the arcane... You divine people have your limitations, but the arcane, you see... Uh, the practitioners of it can uh, restore a modicum of our power uh, in a shorter duration. Oh, well, that's uh, we great. We call it Arcane Recovery, even. You can find <laughs> it on the Player's Handbook, page 115, for everyone watching. Because <laughs> otherwise, I was going to try to, like, I don't know, do something crazy. But, uh, okay, well, while, while you're resting up, I'm just going to, you know, keep checking his idols and make sure he's okay. Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, I suppose I've been resting. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Cause, uh, the, the, the whole time you spent in the tavern, like you, you, a short rest is basically gonna get up, be done soon. Um, I think I heard someone trying to speak. Oh, I was just gonna say, uh, Pip is going to just step over to uh, Tekka's backpack and <gasps> look in and and see if oh. Oli is awake or Oli <laughs> Oli is awake. <laughs> yeah, we should probably. <laughs> Um, Ollie is a nocturnal animal. He uh, seems what time to be. <laughs> um, it's still the middle of the afternoon. Okay. Uh, and Ollie seems to be, to be perfectly comfortable in the little uh, makeshift nest uh, uh, made of uh, of shirts and uh, various uh, blankets and then other kinds of cloth uh, that uh, uh, has been made for him okay. in a backpack. Pip will um, make whatever noise a pangolin makes and just say, <laughs> Hey, Ollie. Hey, um, Tekka, Tekka will be back soon. He, he got, uh, hit really hard. So he's on, he's, um, but he'll, he'll be fine. Okay. Y you just sleep good. Okay. Bye. The pangolin yawns. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, when Pip speaks animal, is it from him or is it from Squeak? It's from Pip, but oh. with animal noises. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you just can't okay. speak. I... This is weirdly <laughs> specific. <laughs> there yeah. are, yeah, there are specific. I feel like there might be like a magical thing going on there, but whatever. What? <laughs> really? I mean, I... <laughs> He does have a magically enchanted rope that's like a binding curse around his neck specifically. I'm not sure if there's a connection. 
Okay. I've given that vibe recently. <laughs> now that so, you mentioned it, I kind of agree. <laughs> so, um, Grangina shows up uh, uh, just a short while after, uh, followed by an exceptionally old man. No, I um, thought you were going to say handsome. I was getting excited. <laughs> an exceptionally Sorry, handsome, handsome man. No. Uh, <laughs> the... Uh, there was a moment before you guys left to go to the tree uh, where you were looking for, for people to let them know that there might have been uh, a disease spreading through through the colony. Um, I feel like in that circumstance you may have maybe not talked directly to him but at least have gotten to like know his name. Um, the, this is the governor of Simulielon. Morthelian, uh, wait, yeah, there it is, Morthelian Umeran. No, there you go. Uh, and we don't have to roleplay this, we can just like go buy it. I just want to know what you're telling him, telling him in terms of who slash what has caused the, uh, what has what has happened in the city? Okay, well, I, this isn't necessarily what Talix would propose in character, but you want to talk about it as players? Real yeah, you would have had a little bit of time before, like in between <laughs> so, Casimir leaving and uh, the two of them, uh, Grangina and. Can we follow Grangina's advice of like, let's not try to pin, like make this about Oladarian? I mean, we can just pin it on metal creatures, right? If there was a metal lion. That's and technically true. Technically, there is a known no threat there. And we also just say, like, the tower was, for some reason, overgrown with yeah. terrible magical plants. But then they'll want to investigate that, and they might blame someone at the library if we don't. So, yeah, Listen, you can't save everyone. <laughs> 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 um, it's either the entire population of the Daria or just one li <laughs> librarian. <laughs> um, also tell you what, uh, uh, I'm gonna put this, like, on break. Um, we're still gonna be on stream, your voices are still coming through, but I might cut this out from the, from the bot later. Uh, but I'm taking this chance to reload the save file and, like, fix everything. Okay. Okay, alright. Um... So we need, uh, the Jamiel controls back. Or not Jamiel, Orm. Oh, you do. Orm. Orm, 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 Orm. Yeah. You love to get orb, used to calling orb, him Orb. Orb, 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 Orb. It's going to take a orb. long time to not you... call him Journal Fleetfoot. <laughs> yeah, Why the, the pun doesn't do work with the Orb. Jormal. <laughs> it really could just be a spike thing. But also, he said that... Orm said that he was trained to keep... Uh, orb away. Yeah. Tinhard away. How does that right. work? <laughs> Mark, mark, I'm mark, curious mark, mark. what that training involves. He must have specifically hunted Can he the smell metal? metal? Waving around a piece <laughs> of metal, I guess. Fetch! Can you smell this? <laughs> this? Bad. <laughs> uh. This is like a drug sniffing dog, but for all metal. <laughs> <laughs> he points at everything all the time. <laughs> I smell Same. constantly. <laughs> Tramiel relied on, like, extremely high-level magic, apparently, so he didn't need metal. It's probably fine. It's a... <laughs> it's a metal detector, dog. I'm pretty popular dog. belief. A lot of high-level spells require a metal of some sort. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you... When speaking to the governor, you blame what happened in Simlielon to... on the plans... And the machine. Is that correct? Yeah, I think we'll just say that somehow this lion, much more advanced than all the other metal machines we've found, somehow magically corrupted the plants kept within that tower and created the monstrous things that spread the spores. Okay. Meh. And... Uh... Grangina just like corroborates whatever you say. <laughs> uh, just she smiles and nods. Yeah, smiles and nods. Occasionally glances at you in a, in a kind of way that she's basically saying, "Really?" But uh, 
doesn't, doesn't uh, she just, yeah, she agrees with everything you state. Can we make a group deception check? Go for it. <laughs> All right. Is Tekka in on this? Uh, is Tekka awake at this point? Oh, yeah, we haven't talked about Tekka. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, sure, oh, I, yeah. Uh, I I'll guess. have recovered. Uh... Oh, never mind. Talos is obviously thinking out loud the whole time he recounts this. <laughs> I said and we were going to start with Tekka waking I up, and then I immediately didn't. Plants? I don't really. Uh, yeah, the lion. The plants. Uh. <laughs> I would have lied like a 15, but then I saw what my company is doing, so I jumped down to a 13. This is my healing role for tech. Uh, I need my inspiration. Tech heals for five. Thank you. Pip's contribution is interpretive dance. <laughs> you you enact the fight scene yeah. with the with the lion. And that's my de my deception, I guess. How will you do that? He didn't see it. And it is important to emphasize that Tekka did fight the lion with his bare hands, <laughs> which is why he's in the state he is now. Uh, Wait. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Slight backtracking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Our rules were so bad. <laughs> um. Pontifex. Um, I haven't heard a goat. Well, what's going on? What? I haven't heard uh, a, a goat. Where's the goat? No, no one's death has been told. Oh, okay. That, that doesn't happen on a healing. I mean, I guess so. If, if you really want the goat, <laughs> I thought it happened with every spell. <laughs> we, need, we need two different bleats. Uh, a bleat of imminent doom and a bleat of nourishment. I'll get on that. I'll look up. Like, uh, like, you know, there's like apps that can hear like your cat meow and then tell you what emotion it's conveying. I'm gonna look up that for goats and then I'll find like the samples <laughs> they use. Okay, good. So I'll have emotional spell casting. Okay. Let's uh, find some ASMR of munching on grass. <laughs> that and, and, and munch on grass. On that sound uh, is when Deco opens his eyes um, <laughs> and he's <laughs> no longer, <laughs> he's no longer chasing Saskarin. Um, and uh, he's not where he remembered being before he fell unconscious, but he quickly recognizes his surroundings. Oh, you, you made it. Good work. So did you. Good to see you, you know, awake, healthy-ish. So we what? were just telling this fellow. <laughs> <laughs> this guy watches it happen. Here's the goat bleat, wonders what the hell is going on. <laughs> I'll follow your lead. I can't believe you, you group check average to less than 10. Nice. Yeah. It's a minus two guy. Let me roll for Regina. <laughs> the she, lowest modifier. She's a warlock. She has a high. Yeah. She has a high charisma. Uh, okay. <laughs> don't don't laugh. <laughs> I'm just laughing your older roll, please. <laughs> It's just, she, I actually rolled very well for her, but like, she just can't fix this average on her own. <laughs> ah. Okay. The... The governor listens to your tale, and he asks for this and that detail, and, uh, you provide what you can while staying, um, staying consistent to the tale that you have uh, decided to to share, um, carefully avoiding any mention of Saskarin or really the involvement of just any um, Lidarian creature at all. Um, until he is satisfied with, with uh, what he has heard. Um, 
and he just asks for your assistance for the rest of the day um, with the people who have uh, still not waken up or and the ones that have woken up but they are uh, they're struggling um, and any help that you can provide even if you are out of magic, uh, even if it just comes down to moving uh, some food from one side of the city to the other, uh, he'll... He, he needs everything. Anything you can do. Is... is the town's Ezen up? <clears throat> you hear Talix? <laughs> Talix asks... Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He is not. Oh. <laughs> I form. I kind of expected that the Ezen would be the one. Hmm. But I wasn't sure. They wear masks all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anything else you want to know from him? Well, the first person we should probably get up is the Ezen. So yeah. then they can help get up yeah. other people um, too. Just so you know, uh, our magic is depleted. Let's... We'll do what we can. I know a bit of... Uh... Well, I have some medical supplies. I know a little bit about using them. Yeah, let's... Um... Um, let's go over this actually. How um, how do you offer your assistance? Well, two questions is one. How do you think uh, um, you you be able to help uh, the the colony? And second, um, if there is anything else you want to do today, uh, let's go well, in order. Well, I'm offering my help. Can I modestly put forth? A proposal of some sort of recompense <laughs> in the form of a favor and money. <laughs> well, that, that's up to y'all. <laughs> use a very sizable sum of expensive <laughs> herbs and incense and spices. Um, oh, well, yeah. To but, summon a fallen friend. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so can do you want to like all do that then? Like all ask for something? First of all, okay, if Talix, if Talix asks, um, so normally not, uh, so cutthroat with this sort of thing, but we could also really use help ourselves and, uh, for the favors we're doing for your city here, can we maybe ask for some favors in return? Sir? Um, sorry, I'm <laughs> going through my notes. Um, he is just dumbfounded the, that you have the I will, I will, the audacity to hell fell. I will, re I will call him uh, in whatever the highest, like the highest sort of um, is honorable term to use <laughs> in Elvish. What, whatever um, the elves are used to refer to their highest elders. You do know that uh, elves in general, uh, settlements, and also just the, the entire country of Elin Arden uh, are led by the the oldest among them, who are considered to be the, the wisest. Um, so the, the fact that this man is so old uh, is like uh, normal. <laughs> 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 um, Elves age differently from all the other races. Uh, um, it's like this man is like his skin has uh, cracks just across his face, across his hands. Um, and he. He almost reminds you of like a tree bark, just the way his, his skin is. Uh, with most elves, it's hard to tell their age, but like there comes a moment when it gets so old that uh, they look like this. And um, that's visually distinctive uh, even for for non elves uh and like as you're in the middle talix of like being uh like 
of asking for something in return. He basically just like puts up hand to interrupt you and he just says, anything you need. Good, because uh, well, personally, I need to make a journey south maybe somewhat fast. So if you have, do we have horses in Midoriya? <laughs> yes, they are being brought over from Florina. You have, if we could just borrow some horses in a well, tomorrow, probably. Uh, to return. Um, he'll just quickly count all of that, all of you. Uh, with Grangina still being here, yes. he asks, uh, uh, six of them? If everyone's here, comfort if everyone here is comfortable with riding? I, I would assume. I've never tried, mm -hmm. but, uh... Oh, thank you so much. All right, I'm at your service. Uh, and Grangina speaks up and like puts her hands in front of her face and shakes him and says, ah, I'm not coming. I'm not involved in whatever that is. Oh, thank God. Fair enough. Well, you don't have to be so rude about it. <coughs> I think you should ignore him. But, uh... Well, we yeah, have more to talk day. about, but we'll talk before we leave. Uh, is right. anyone else asking uh, for any <clears throat> other favors? Pip, Pip holds up his pouch and shakes it a little bit. <laughs> Pip, uh, yes, our young friend needs some supplies uh, for his religious rituals, as I do as well, come to think of it. But I'd be willing to pay for it, honestly. Uh, well, yeah, we should probably make sure the town's put together, but we will maybe uh, try to get inventory on that later. Pip, Pip's eyes squint, and he, he looks a little confused for a second, and then his eyes widen, and he shakes his head, and he reaches in the pouch and pulls out several rocks. <laughs> oh, um, his rituals... Require a lot of uh, polished rocks of various sorts. You got any of those around? You know where we could find some? Um, he lets you know that in the state that the city is currently in, um, it might be a short while before shops are open again. Definitely not today. It may not be um, too soon, but uh, uh, as soon as uh, as soon as things are operational again. Um, you will make sure that you get what you need. Are we talking on the order of days, or...? Um, he thinks that some stores might be operational again as soon as tomorrow. Some might be out for weeks. Understood. Uh, he does let you know that so far, I tl uh, there have been people that have been found dead. Wait, we haven't offloaded Saskaren yet, <laughs> have we? I thought we, we did. Oh, we have? Took okay, him. we have. Yeah. Okay, that's right, that's right. So I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, Does sorry. Brooke have any request? Uh, nope. Does Pontifex? Uh, yes, but it seems a little rude, uh, given the circumstances, but... Uh... I don't believe that this incident of saving a city from an event like this is going to be our last, or even uh, our last in the short term. Uh, so just, uh, I don't want to just ask for money outright, because as you said, the shots are not available, but uh, do you have a, a city guard or something of the sort, like a armory, barracks, anything like that? Hold on, run away by me one more time. You're asking about the city guard? Right. He's asking, is there like, like is there a city guard? Like, is there a barracks slash armory type of thing for this, for these outposts? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, there is. Hey, would they be willing to spare some supplies? Uh, our recent in encounter with the metal beast that did all of this showed that uh, some of our Equipment is not as resilient as we we thought. 
Um, <laughs> the governor can arrange for it, yes. Yeah, yeah so that's, I just need some new armor. This one got the, the worst of it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, Austin. <laughs> What to fire with? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one bullet. What people usually do. This <laughs> tech, I have any request. No. <laughs> okay. Um. He extends uh, the um, also the uh, the the offer to Grangina, um, who thinks about it and uh, says. You can just owe me one. Uh, I don't believe I've heard from all of you about if uh, um, about the plans for the day. But like, is there anything in particular that like I need to know that you guys are doing that is special well, or are you going anywhere? After, so after we make those arrangements, I suppose mm -hmm. this old gentleman leaves us, and then. Or just kind of deciding where to go on our Yeah, own. yeah, you, you'll end up splitting up most most uh, certainly uh, from Alex everyone. Alex might suggest to Pip and others who want supplies, like, if you want it expediently, maybe just go help in the locations that you want to receive the supplies from, so that right. they might I, just appeal, take it upon themselves to give it to you. I personally waiting. need to go and visit the scribe order. Oh. Back up on the tower? Uh, correct, yes, sir. Over Lord's, by the font. Well, there's probably lots you can do up there anyway to help him. It's wrecked. <laughs> so. Uh, and actually, hey, Pip, if you have nothing you plan to do, I would love for you to accompany me. Mm. Uh, Pip, uh, Pip points at his empty shoulder. Is, <laughs> that is precisely why. Hmm? You can get some components. I feel like if anyone would have components for this type of thing, it would be the wizard in school, or in the Order of Scribes in particular. Pip nuts. If you could pick me up some incense while you're there, I would appreciate uh, it. Like what kind of incense? Like like expensive oh, you know, or just, just incense? general, uh... <laughs> it, <laughs> General use uh, the, the sort that you can use as uh, low-level spell components. That oh, okay, generally... because I have these <laughs> and he'll open his little alms box. I have two blocks of incense. They just don't have any <laughs> gold value. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah, we can. I mean, I'm going for the good stuff, but if it is not important uh, monetarily, then I have these. All right. We'll just. Sure. We'll just like. Uh... I would yeah, like to purchase 30 gold pieces worth of incense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. If you just give me the specifics, I will ask you no problem. I don't think I have a specific thing. I was just saying, like, I, I use that a lot as, like, it's a component for a lot of rituals, so uh, like, I definitely would probably be running low. So, I don't think we need to worry about the logistics of it. I okay. intend to stock up on that. Materials for squeak. This seems to have happened more than once. <laughs> All I, right. If it helps, I do. I do have a list of things that that Pip would definitely want to get. Um, awesome. Yes, send it my way. Cool. And um, uh, I think Talix will want to help the Ezin. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Sure. You can try to use uh, Tekka's. Homemade perfume to help wake him up, maybe. <laughs> That's something I was thinking about trying before. I don't know if it'll have any effect. But we're yeah, gonna learn about what this flower can do. <laughs> <laughs> what flower did he make it out of? Um, so it's it's inspired by the bee balm. I don't know what the actual name in this world would would be, but that's what it's inspired by. Mm, I just don't remember where, like, you, f you found the ingredients for it. Uh, if it was anywhere in particular. Uh, 
Well, it was before we got on the boat. It was when the flowers. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The gardener. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, Tekka and Talix can team up to get the Ezen back on his feet. Um, <clears throat> the name of this one is Tun. And, uh, um, yes, it does appear that he also was affected by, by the spores. <clears throat> uh, but you're, you're able to wake him up uh, and, uh, your combined knowledge of medicine and his, um, um, <laughs> <clears throat> <sighs> He's going to to get him back in on his feet in no time, and then he uh, he gets to work uh, to also assist others. Uh, da, 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 got that. And if he was willing to part with just a few supplies to allow Talix to restock his healer's kit, because he's expended two uses. Uh, yeah. But I don't know. Yes, he can. Okay. Okay. Does Tekka need anything? Uh, maybe some bandages, if those are available. They are, and you can have however many you'd like. Well, to a reasonable amount. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of them in this town. I'm gonna rob this town blind of bed. <laughs> Who needs them? I think... We're gonna make a trebuchet, and bandages are... <laughs> <laughs> I think that Brooke would ask Taika to get some bandages for him as well. And then help clear stuff in the front of the alchemy area. And then once enough stuff is done, go back down. Oh, he would also tell you that there's a chance he might not come to the inn tonight. Oh. Just in case the evening gets long. Yeah, a lot of time torturing Saskarin through the night. <laughs> yep. Can't wait. <laughs> Gotta keep it away from the 12 year old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pontifex and Pip. Okay. Uh, oh, do you wanna go first? You no, go no, first. No, 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 you go first. No, I insist. I okay, insist. Okay, okay. Um, I would like uh, 30 gold pieces worth of incense herbs and stuff for fine familiar if that's available now or if maybe uh, wizards will give it to me for free <laughs> with if you search for those uh, at the Similian Orden of Scribes uh, when Pontifex takes you there uh, and, and, and Pontifex is something you would ask about yeah um, yeah, that's his intention as right. well as to stockpile on this um, stuff. A total of 50 um, gold pieces worth of materials for Find Familiar are available. Cool. For for uh, free. For free? Oh, for dang. Free. 50 gold's worth. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, all right. How much do you, how much do you need, Talix? Jason? I I was sort of... It's just something that I generally use a lot in rituals, and I haven't really been keeping track of it, honestly. <gasps> uh, so, I know, I know. It's like it's like a costless component, so I don't think about it too much. So, whatever. It's there just is, like a background thing. Pick me up some incense while you're out. There is a 30 gold, gold worth of incense available for free. Alright. I... I'm pretty sure that all of my rituals don't even like put a cost with it. It's just. Oh, really? Hmm. It's just. Oh, when, when if there's it's no there, cost than just like, regular incense, it's probably the incense from the priest pack, which is what I have. Yeah, right. And I, I haven't been depleting the ones that I've had. Okay. So well, I, if it's costless, it probably. Oh, does it say that the spell consumes? Oh, it probably well, doesn't I mean, consume. if you burn incense, it has to. Whatever. Yeah. Does Pontifex um, need any of this? For uh, anything that yeah. doesn't say that it gets consumed, I will assume that you like restock regularly on it. 
Uh, yeah. in, in this case, yeah, it's happening. There is instance I'll just available. Say, yeah, I, I just sort of, yeah, just back. Yeah, the worst, the worst. Uh, I was just gonna get thirty GP worth. So, do you want the other twenty? Uh, sure, because he wants to watch you do this. <laughs> oh, I see. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, Pip would also like to try and. After the events of of the day that they just had, Pip is starting to realize that maybe maybe he should wear something that might protect him a bit. Uh, so he would he would likely want to look around to see if there's any maybe studded leather armor available. You can go Perhaps. in the next place that Pontifex was gonna go. Oh, great! <laughs> Perhaps having been originally made for a gnome or a halfling or something. Because <laughs> uh, Pontifex was gonna go rob the guards, yeah. Uh, uh, preferably, yes, with resistance. I like it when they fight for it. <laughs> Makes it more valuable. They happen to have a gnome soldier? Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I don't know if it would fit, but I would fight him all the same. <laughs> well, that's for Pip. <laughs> Perfect. There would be blood. Blood for the blood god. With, that's, um, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, the, co the governor having uh, put in a word for you guys for what you're about to do. Um... In terms of equipment from the from the local guard or for anything they can spare, uh, you may have um, any light armor or medium armor. No, not any uh, or medium armor up to a breastplate for free. None of this is useful. <laughs> and uh, heavy armor up to splint. Okay, perfect. Yeah, splint is. Is kind of what I was hoping for, so that works. Um, and if they can spare it, two daggers. They preferably, can. Preferably spare... made of iron. Oh. Do you want them new? Do you want them used? I need daggers too. Doesn't matter as long as it's made of iron. <laughs> Get me some as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> Doesn't have to be iron. Here's to the ether. <laughs> Get me like 304. Uh, yeah. Daggers are available. Are they made of iron? They are made of iron, most of them. Cool. No, not most of them. Uh, most of them are steel. But yes, there's iron daggers. Okay. Uh, Pip will take two iron daggers and I don't. Uh, does Brooke tell me he wants some before we go? I yes, guess. Yes, you had yeah, a shopping list. Wanna... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we had a lot more time to uh, to talk <laughs> about this as a group before we all split up. You can like... choose Pip. He either tells you to go back again or he told you before. <laughs> How many do you want? Seven? Four. Four. You want four? four? <laughs> yeah. Pip just goes out with a, with an <laughs> arm full of daggers. Yeah, the, 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 like, the guards there are a little unsure about oh, the number of weapons they're giving to a child, but that's what the governor said. Okay. Four steel ones for Brooke, two iron ones for Pip. Thank you. <laughs> I need my daddy. This, this old ass man. Just lugging around this piece of armor, which I'm I'm encumbered now. I'm heavily encumbered <laughs> carrying this thing. <laughs> Just hauling this pile. And he's of like, armor. yes, this is perfect. <laughs> Like throws it on a table, wraps it in like a tablecloth, and just Santa Claus is the thing. And the little gremlin with a noose on his neck is just grabbing every knife in sight. <laughs> <laughs> time and we leave. Happy holidays or whatever. I gotta cut the noose off. Yeah. <laughs> one for each one. One yeah. for each yeah. Yeah. And the bonus one. <laughs> we the, want the, the bread and we the don't like to reuse your bougie yeah. like that. <laughs> okay. We just got a dart board with no darts, so knives it is. <laughs> Uh, Rook, <clears throat> uh, what, what were you doing? Uh, <clears throat> helping in front of the alchemy store, and once things have settled a little bit, go down to Cass. Okay. Uh, eventually. Um. Uh, hello, Google Doc. Hello? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's good. Um. 
Uh, at, at some point, eventually, the the gnome that runs the the alchemies and alcohol alcohols uh, shows up, and um, he he. You've, uh, by by helping around town, it's clear that like everyone who is of uh, a small size has has been out for longer than everyone else and tends to uh, be in in worse shape. Um, and poor Altos is uh, uh, there's a lot for him, but he has dragged himself back in his store because there's a lot of people who uh, like uh, Brooke have found themselves in need of uh, of uh, healing items. Uh, so sure enough, eventually he's back behind the counter, and um, you check with him. He's, he thinks, he tells you he's going to be fine. You're not entirely sure if he will uh, survive until tomorrow, but... Um... Oh! <laughs> 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 uh, and yeah, you can you can go <clears throat> back uh, uh, in, the, in the Phantom Guard's uh, uh, hideout. I would also tell the alchemist guy that Casimir owns, uh, owes him. Some money for one. Okay, yeah, he noticed uh, that something was missing, and he, at least he can put like, like a name to whoever needs to pay it. Uh, and yeah, you can head back in uh, 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 underground. What do you need to do? Uh, he wanted to know what happened, right? Mm -hmm. You bring Casimir up to speed? Uh, before I do that. Kaz, if, if there are basically two versions of the story I can tell you. <laughs> um, for one version, you Which have to Which one is the fun me. one? Uh, both are decently fun. One's just fun longer. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. But yeah, you would have to promise me that if you want the long version to not tell anyone. Not even Brunolf. Not even Brunolf? At least Ooh. for now. That's... Oh, oh Brooke, what have you gotten yourself into? He scratches his head. Was uh, that a yes? The promise? We phantoms are very good at keeping secrets. I'll keep yours. Um, yeah, uh, I want the short and long story. Come on. Yeah, he tells him then everything that happened. And like from the start of going, of looking for Jamil, going into the cave, going through Cleon, Vera, finding the witch. <clears throat> and then stops at the dreamer tree. By the way, we did find the dreamer tree. And it was oddly... As you guys described, like, we walked there and then we were just there. And... and what happened? Well... I did dream. We did all wake up with some sort of animals. And then our dreams were shown to each other. And I don't know, but it seemed like... Well, I was shown like a dream or like a memory of the old times. You know, with like... The scouts. You've heard about us. Or you, we have told you about it. And there was like a big black panther. And I don't know why, but something in the something in the dream made it seem like that was sunny. Well, it was a dream of your old group, no? Uh, they were all um, there. Well, at first she was there in first she was there in furbog form, and afterwards in the form of a black panther, who also woke up next to me under the tree. Um, hmm. Uh, <laughs> just Casimir is going to... He is twirling his little mustache. Um, 
and he looks at you in the eyes. There is this moment sometimes where he looks... Uh, um, he, he's the kind of guy who knows how to have fun, probably a bit too much, but also knows uh, when things are serious. And this is one of those moments where um, he uh, he stops fidgeting, he even puts down the, the ale that he was drinking, and he just stares at you and he says, What wisdom have you gotten from all this? I'm not sure. I mean... Oop. She was there just like another person, right? Like any of us five. Not like part of the dream. It's like she was dreaming that with me. She couldn't... When I tried to did to, When I did try to talk to her, she couldn't really tell me anything. Number one, uh, it was a panzer, <laughs> even though she could understand me. Number two, when I asked her, she did stretch out her tongue. Her tongue? Yeah. Have you ever heard of something like this? <sighs> Bruka. I'm sorry. I can't tell you about that. I think Brooke finishes his drink. We're probably going to visit her tomorrow. Um, if you want to join us, you're always welcome to. I'd She'd probably be happy. I'd love to. I go there sometimes on my own. <laughs> uh, is it weird? I, I hope it's not weird. It is not weird. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd love to come with. <sighs> you want me to stay overnight? Then we can just go in the morning together to the others. Is it just I did bring be... flowers for her. What? Sorry, can you, can you repeat that? <laughs> Uh, they did bring flowers for her, so... Someone else is coming? Well, the group. Potentially. Oh. Yeah, alright, uh... No, there's, there's no need for you to, to stay here. Not that I wouldn't want you to, but... You got yourself some new friends, you should spend some time with them. Just come pick me up when you're ready. Okay. Brooke. <clears throat> yeah. I just wanted you to know that. Uh... Now, don't take me for a softie. Just uh, you and Sunny. Uh... The, the three of us. We made some good memories together. That's. That's it. He smiles. I... I thought I'd showed you already, but... The time all three of us spent together, up here... It's so far, at least, the highlight of... My short life on Ladaria. So, of course, it was... It's very good memories. And I'm pretty sure she, she saw it's the same. At least towards me, she always talked very highly of you. Unless you got super drunk again. Those were the board. best times. For you, not for her. Ah, she loved it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I'll, I'll... I'll get you tomorrow then. I'll be here. You know, I've been poking around and turns out I might eat side to leave. A few days later than I thought it was? So my whole schedule is just out of whack. Wait, wait, wait. How long have you been knocked out? <sighs> it's been about uh, two days. Two days? Almost three, yeah. Hmm. 
All right, that's good to know. Well, keep that Saskarin guy safe. We will get him probably tomorrow as well, so we can talk to him. I I know I can't bring the the group in here, right? To talk, we have to bring him outside. You know the rules, Brook. I know. Um, yeah. All right, then I'll get you early tomorrow morning, and then afterwards we can go visit Sunny, and then we'll see what the day brings. Right? Yeah, right. Good night, Brooke. Hey, he lowers down to his hide and gives him a hug and th then walks out and before he's at the exit, he screams back to him. By the way, you owe the alchemist one or the gold for one uh, small healing potion. Then puts a thumbs up and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> he just yells back, "What?" <laughs> He's not getting a response. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, did I forget anyone? I did not. I mean, we had Tag and I are helping the Essen. We didn't. Is there anything else that Tekka wanted to do while we were there? You're getting bandages. Maybe just a conversation in the evening when we're all together, but yeah, that's it. Um, just while we're out and about, Talus wants to know, has anyone heard of the Silver Claw here in town and do they know where it is? I just want to figure out where it is. Where, uh, whatever they are, like if they have like a base of operations. Um. The archaeologists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, uh, that just really doesn't even need a, a role. Um, it's it's well known enough. You'd ask a few people, and eventually somebody will be able to yeah give you a, bit, a little bit of information. Um, it's uh, the silver claw is uh, the local, uh, not the only, but the newest. Uh, uh, most uh, freshly founded guild of archaeologists, uh, and they, they give you uh, the location of its uh, of its headquarters, which is uh, this tower over here. And over here. Okay. That is it. Everyone comes back to the to the inn in the evening. Mm-hmm. Um, the Oop, okay, here it is. Um, Kylo at at this point in the evening is uh, uh, awake, and he's back to managing uh, uh, the <laughs> the dragon wagon. Um. He of uh, of the many elves that you've seen today, he's doing fine, um, visibly tired, uh, and uh, eating and uh, drinking perhaps like a little bit more water than he should. Uh, but just uh, and, and he should not be working right now. But he's 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 keeping the place uh, uh, running somehow. Um, and uh, when uh, when the first uh, of your group. Uh, <clears throat> will will come through the the door uh he will let you know that the um tireless uh, uh postman of uh, the uh warpoint uh, uh of warpoint have delivered uh, two letters one for pip one for talix <laughs> and you'll just like Hand them over. Make sure that they they they, they reach your group. Mm. It's a letter. Pip opens it. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Um. On. Do you want it to be all on your own in secret? Uh, he just takes it and opens it. <laughs> okay. Uh. So, Pip. He doesn't your savor letter. it like Pontifex. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's fair. Pontifex uh, is visibly uh, sad. But he hasn't <laughs> had a word from his dwarf woman yet. Uh, uh, Pontifex actually receives uh, a lot of junk mail. Uh, it is good but enough. nothing, nothing from the dwarf. Although um, that might still be a little early for that, uh, or she is ignoring you, which would be the worst outcome. <laughs> I will find you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the letter addressed to Pip uh, is uh, uh, it's small. It's a it's a very small envelope, and there is a date stamped on the outside. It is dated uh, the twelfth of uh, Amwa of the current year. Uh, that doesn't mean much to Pip. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remind it's, me what day it is fair. today? Yeah, sure. Today is uh, the seventeenth. So it was sent five days ago. <coughs> Ah, uh, just yeah. Man, flip it over. Pretty, pretty good mail speeds. It's over here. Oh, whoa! There's a thing. Yeah, it's it's on your it's on your. Oh, whoa! Hey, you may... Pip. Thank you. Are you still with all the people we've met? This is alien, by the way. I was hoping that you, or maybe Brooke, since he's a phantom, had any news about my brother? He packed his things and left home a few days ago and hasn't really given us a reason, and we haven't heard from him since. If you've seen him, could you please let us know? Mama's worried sick. She was thinking of moving back to Plurna, but she won't do it without Fortis. Let us know if you know anything. Thank you. I hope you're doing well. Notably, Does anyone remember, did we tell Fortis about the other wolf? Mm, I think we might have. I think we told one of them. I think we did. It was an older one, if that was Fortis. I, yeah, I, yeah. I was trying to... Oh, crap. No, oh, fuck. No. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pip. Pip, um, um, so, yeah, I have it here in my notes. Liana, specifically, has been warned by Brooke. Uh, Brooke did mention a, a lycanthrope, but, uh, uh, like, he specifically omitted to say that his lycanthrope is a Lidarian. But otherwise, she knows the situation. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, no, here it is. <clears throat> Fortis has been... Warn about a werewolf, and he does know everything. Although people try to minimize uh, the, the danger of the situation a little bit. Yeah, that's what I thought. Pip, Pip had a separate conversation with him. Uh, Pip. Pip looks at the letter and then uh, reads over a, a couple of times about Fortis packing his things and leaving, and and wordlessly he, his hands just start shaking and he, he he looks around to the the others in the party and, and just sort of hands the letter out everyone else uh, uh reads the contents as well I wonder if Fortis has like a well point card. Could come in pretty handy right now. I imagine Still they would have sent this to him. <laughs> Pip is trying to call a bird over. A bird, any bird, roll an animal handling check. Ta -ta -ta. I don't know if he's hunting the wolf and the wolf's hunting us. Maybe we can find him, actually. Is the wolf hunting us? Oh. <coughs> Dang, son. Um, okay, three small birds uh, uh, approach the window and land on the, wi on the windowsill. Two black, one uh, with a red stripe on his chest. Okay. 
uh, Pip will uh, open the window and and start talking to them a, a little bit frantic. Uh, hey, hey, um, thanks for coming uh, on such short notice. I, <laughs> I am, um, I have a friend and he's in a lot of danger. Uh, um, I was hoping that maybe one of you could deliver a message. I, I don't have much to give you except maybe, um, I, I could tell you about some good places to get some berries or something along the way. Um, oh yeah, they're down. <laughs> okay. Um, nope. Then, in that case, Pip is going to cast Animal Messenger. Oh! Okay! Nice. On whichever one seems... Uh... I don't know. <laughs> one of them Either. is as excited as a dog to just, like... Uh, this is, like, the best day of his life. He's always wanted to... to uh, talk to a human, and uh, he he's going to prove himself. Okay. Um, so with this spell, I I can speak a message of up to twenty five words to the to the creature, and it will fly towards a specified location, mm -hmm, which you must um, have visited. Which I must have visited, and a, a recipient who matches a general description. So. Pip is going to describe Fortis in as much detail as possible, the kinds of clothes he's typically wearing, uh, you know, hair color, height, a little taller than me. Um, and uh, as for the specified location, Pip is just not sure at all. <laughs> um, but, uh, and is even less sure about how to communicate it to animals. <laughs> um, but, uh, Pip will try his best and say, uh, sort of south of here, uh, along the a long windy road, you know, where there's no there's no trees, um, uh, near Cleon. Do you know what Cleon is? It's a city, uh, but it's not that <laughs> Cleon far. Cleon is like 300 miles away from Simlianon. <laughs> do, do you know what Cleon the, is? The bird can reach up to 50 miles from the <laughs> <laughs> but this this bird is eager. This, this bird is just like, I'll find it. Yeah, it's and easy. Pip, I'll find it. Pip is just like, you know, sort of in that direction. Do you know what south is? I, I just can figure it out. Just follow the road that way and Pip points. I can figure it out. Give me the berries. <laughs> why, why, why Cleon, though? Uh, they were from Vera. They're from Vera, yeah. yeah. They're from Vera, that's right. Um... Very close, so really, it's just 175 early. miles. <laughs> uh, yep. Tell us to find Cleon and then ask other birds to move there. Ah, it. Yeah, get there and then ask for directions. Um, I got this. I got this. I can do it. Okay, so it's only a little bit south. It's Wera is where you're going. It's towards Cleon, but not all the way to Cleon, <laughs> and it's not as far south. It's more. Which, is that east or west? And then, Hold like on. the three birds start converse, conversing with each other, trying to figure out, and uh, putting it's, their heads it's together. It's that direction. That one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's the message? Okay. Um. The message is. Fortis. If you're receiving this, you really need to go back home. It's dangerous out here. If not, find <laughs> us. My world point card is, is this too many words? Uh, let me cut, let me cut. If you are hearing this, congratulations, Tools. you speak to animals. Word count. <laughs> so, when you get to my war point card is that's twenty four words. Uh, this and then Pip attaches the world point card to the the bird. That works, right? <laughs> this is how this works. How do uh, world point cards work? Do any of you know? Twenty five words. Yeah, yeah, we can figure it out. <laughs> I love these birds. This is cool. Yeah, we got this. All right, I need you. I need you guys to help each other, cause I'm pretty sure in 24 hours you'll forget all about this. 
So you've only got that much time. You can't sleep or anything. <laughs> they take off. This, uh, e each of them chirping about how they get. They they have to get this done right away. Oh, he's An important screwed. job. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of you, you see, um, you see it is this Disney princess over here by the windowsill. Uh, chirping back and forth with a bunch of birds uh, and attaching his war point card to one of the uh, of the legs of the birds and then all three of them take off oh pip not confusing little scamp <laughs> <coughs> mm. so what do you do about this except At a certain point, the boy chooses his own path. He'll learn it one way or another, or... I mean, if we knew how to help him, of course I'd want to, but... Who knows where he is? Hmm. Maybe we can, I don't know, ask around. Up here? Well, maybe he would have <laughs> made his way into the towns that we've been to. Well, that's assuming this wolf is even tracking us, and he's even tracking the wolf. We don't really know. We certainly can't go all the way back to Wero. I mean... Right? If the wolf is still tracking us when we're gone looking for Ordis, that would leave the wolf straight back to him. I don't think that's the smartest idea. Hmm? You mean to say that you don't think he's tracking the wolf? Oh no, oh. Did I? Okay, I didn't come through completely. Um, I did say... <clears throat> If the wolf is actually tracking us, and we go look for Fortis, that would mean we bring uh, the wolf directly to Fortis. So that wouldn't be the best idea. Yeah, uh, maybe... And we can't really maybe. split up either. Can any of us communicate with people who are still in some of the towns we've been through? I mean, we can try to catch word if some... Some kid with a crossbow has come through. Only the slow way. I mean, if uh, we just communication with people from previous towns, yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have the world point of uh, uh, what's her face, uh, the cat lady, uh, stars <laughs> in her eyes. I'm pretty sure I have her world point. I am a bit of a pickup artist, you could say. <laughs> Is she in Cleon? She's in Cleon, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that... I mean, you can ask. He probably didn't go back that way, though. Um, I don't know if maybe I established this, but and you can you can decide whether or not to do this. But it makes sense that if if he would have the world point of anyone, it would have been the the secretary for Ralsir Gamir, Gathar. <laughs> <laughs> really? You guys the... hit it off so no, so well. Yeah. Isn't he also in Cleon? Oh, he's in Vera. Oh wait, no. Ralsir no, he's in Vera. Ralsir Gamir, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, would that make sense for the professor to have had his world point card? I don't know I if guess, he'd be very responsive, but someone... I guess the only other place to ask would be someone in Aria. Like, that would be a place that he might have passed through if he didn't come straight to Simlilon and he followed our track. Uh, is there, like, a directory or something? Because we have the cleric in Aria, uh, uh, Mr. Enwild. Uh, oh, there, speaking there's of like which, a public directory, uh, there is something. You could do the leaf here. thing. Oh, it doesn't go that far, but I could just send him a letter. I uh, probably yeah, need sure, to anyway. Yes. Whoever has a world point of the people, uh, <laughs> yeah, tell maybe Enwild is a better one in Aria, <clears throat> but in Vera, where the, the children is in, uh, were in Vera, right? Yeah. I can try for a guitar, but uh, I wouldn't hold my breath. That's uh, worth a shot. 
Talxi, the letter you're holding in your hand uh, um, also comes from Vera. Uh, it's a it's a more it's a heavier envelope compared to what Pip got. Um, Is there like an official seal? In the on back, it? yeah, it's uh, there's a wax seal that's stamped with a symbol of a lion reaching for the sun. Oh, the lion. Oh wait, this. Oh, it's from Vera, not not from Arya. Oh. Vera, yeah. Oh, it's the. Hey, this is from. Um, I'm not gonna remember her name. <laughs> you never remember her name. Ah, copies that important then. Wait, which one? Who? Sa. Oh well. Wait, you were talking about the Lady of the Lion, Sarah Beth. Sarah Beth. Sarah Beth. Thank you. Yes, of course. Yes. I know all the names of everyone I've ever met in three hundred years. I should really have like notes up whenever I'm doing this. <laughs> I have her on my notes, but I figured like of the people in Vera, he definitely wouldn't have her world point. He yeah, kind of just the her. lady who saved your life. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he he was very in. Um, I've just been fucking shot. Mode, <laughs> so he wasn't there. Hey, can I have your number, baby? <laughs> I don't know. It's <laughs> fun to fight, man. <laughs> You should <laughs> smile more. You should smile more and give me your address. Uh, <laughs> you want to see my sexy scar? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, They're all over my head. Oh, yeah. All right. So uh, I'm just going to put it over here because it's a bigger one. Okay. Um. Well, I guess we've got word from, from Wera. Oh, this might be about the, uh, the mystery we kind of left unsolved. Oh god, let's see the text. <laughs> Alright, let's read everyone. <laughs> to Talix Moyer, I hope this letter finds you and your companions well. It has been 11 days since you left Wera. There has been a development in the case of Pax's death that I wish to inform you about. Once the case was closed and the Atara Philly left the colony, oh, we eventually began the process of clearing and repurposing Pax's house. Eventually, we opened one of the barrels in the basement and discovered. Pax's corpse rotting within. Oh dear. Oh, did we not check the barrels? That seems fairly obvious. Oh, we only had uh, some. No, oh god. We opened some and they were <laughs> empty. We, uh, we fucked up this one. <laughs> <laughs> the mystery you understand was anything but solved. However, do not misunderstand you and your companions. Assistance was still invaluable. Ultimately, the responsibility of this mistake is mine and mine alone. And the one who failed to reveal the truth. Rather than blame you, I wish to impart upon you the same lesson I've learned from this. Do not blindly place your faith, faith in others. Learn to doubt more than you trust. The Dorians aren't different from us. Among them, there are some who will bend the truth and break the rules. Mm. Ah, I would have learned the truth far sooner had we simply ignored their customs. Had we examined the body in their possession, or had we proceeded with a full interrogation under my truth spell, we would have known right away that the body they were hiding from us was not Pax's, and they'd committed a different murder from the one we believed to take place. You thought we were respecting their culture, but in truth, not even they were observing their own rules. They merely weaponized them against us. I should have stood by the virtues that we Convalians must believe in, justice and duty. Everything that gets in the way of either must be cast aside when the... <laughs> uh, when the need arises. It comes no, as no surprise to you that I proceeded with the autopsy. Without the Atar fellow to stop me, then I went a step further. Though you will likely disapprove of my actions, I want you to know that we have traveled to the cemetery north of here, how I know, and dug up the body they had buried. Only then did the truth become clear. The reason why neither of our suspects admitted to killing Pax is that we had the wrong premise the entire time. It was never about Pax's murder, it was about Saul's. It was his body that they took away from the colony and buried, hiding in Pax's robe and mask, forbidding us from examining it. Still, there is an upside. Following a thorough invest second investigation, I have uncovered something of value. I now understand why the Ezen cover their faces and bodies. Under different circumstances, I may have kept the secret. However, after the events of the last few weeks, I no longer feel I owe the Lodorians any respect. Their secrets, their mysteries are being used against us. They are deceptions. 
On the back of this letter, I will have written the secret of the Ezen people. If you wish to remain in the dark, simply destroy it. If you want to open your eyes, keep on reading. Alex will fold up the letter and put it away. You're muted. That spooked me. I was... Did you read that out loud, the letter? <laughs> Everything up until that. Everything up until, until the end of what was on that page. You don't want to know what's below the mask? We can have that discussion later. I mean, not to pry into your business, but I, for one, am curious. If, if it is of no matter to you, I would gladly keep the information to myself. But I'm not of a belief that knowledge should be suppressed. What do you mean by later? We made a mistake, but that does not mean... As she said, that all customs of Ladorian should be ignored as weapons against us, or whatever she said. That's. I mean, honestly, that that part reads like straight up propaganda against Ladorians. <laughs> I have read that stuff before, and while she has reason to be angry, since obviously Zaytara did lie to us. That what she wrote is not the way to go about it. Who was that? That Do was the that? Uh, the other the other Itara Pelli, the one that got in the fights over the uh, uh, okay. over the woman. Got it. They told us he ran away. He left the colony. Did Pip throw something? <laughs> yeah, you're hit. He just hit something in the room. Ah. Kicks the table. <sighs> he probably slams the drawer with his mind. <laughs> Taka, you once said that you would rather bury knowledge again. When one part and stick up to the past. You hold one side of the story in your head. Do you believe it so blindly? I don't agree with a lot of what she said. I can say that. That said, they were clearly hiding something about Sol. I think she's telling the truth about that. I mean, they also had no reason to trust us. But when it comes to the matter of, uh, of whatever secret the Ezen hold, It seems to be something... It wasn't just those Ladarians saying that. It just seems to be something sacred to all Ladarian people. And maybe there's a good reason why they're keeping that from us. I just... What do you make of that? I said I would insult to you on these sorts of things. I do not control the roads of your lives as you do not control mine. I have grown up respecting their choice. If you choose to turn the letter 
then I will not be here to hear it. Okay. I would say, uh, let's keep that for another day. There's still a lot to do. And I'd rather stay focused on the present, for now. Can we agree on that? Broke shrugs. It's your letter. I cannot say that I'm not uh, disappointed. But as he said, it is your letter to do with as you choose. Are you so? Oh? Uh, yeah, bro, go on. <laughs> you can start. <laughs> There is one thing we need to talk about. What is it? In my unconscious state, I again met the God Claimer, Saskaran, with him. That's right. Oh, we. I meant to ask you about that, but that. That governor fellow was here. Yes. Yes. It was not the time. Uh, did you happen to have a fruitful conversation with Saskarin? Or with the drop? Without surprise, Saskarin was frightened of me. Any approach was met with escape. But I spoke with the person depicted in your drawings. It is strange. He seems to have created this place, have existed in it since its inception. And unable to escape it himself. That's... I mean, I know I've put forward my thoughts or whatever I could muster before. Uh, after we met that tiefling boy, I felt like that sort of reinforced what I was thinking. It seems similar, no? Perhaps... He was buried beneath Vakanoth, as that boy was buried beneath the dream tree. Huh. Vakanoth seems to hold great power, so that something like this world would be below its roots would not surprise me. Still, I wonder why... He did not seem to understand why and when people arrive there and then leave. You know what would be good to know? If he's seen visitors, aside from the ones we know about, before me. That would tell us a lot. He had created a person like me, and I saw many other people there. Perhaps his other visitors created in their image. It is a strange place. Well, I suppose he must have been dead, or some approximation of it for a long time.
What is it with all the dead people we've been meeting recently? Isn't that a bit weird? Tekka, what do you know about dreamwalking? It's a term we've heard here and there. I do not know much about it. Perhaps being alive within dreams. Some amount of control, connection. Maybe it's something you could learn. Uh, it seems important to to Ladarian people, at least. But again, oh, this feels feels like it must somehow be similar. These stories are so similar. Yet I don't think we will find answers today. But let us keep it in mind as we keep moving. <sighs> so tomorrow, uh, tomorrow we speak with Saskarin. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna tell him? What is our goal? Well, Pip and Pontifex said that we can, through their magic, we can get anything we want out of them, right? So just their intentions, maybe learn more about Orm, or <clears throat> why he went so weird with a plant against us all of a sudden. Yeah. Pip is sort of in the middle of laying out this uh, ritual circle uh, with some of the incense and herbs that he had gotten earlier and you hear in your head, Talix. We get the truth. Whatever it takes. Okay. Do you have everything you need? Almost. But that's right. what this is for. Okay, so in the morning we stock up, get all the remaining supplies we need, get Squeak back, then wait, that is that what he's doing or is he <laughs> Okay. We get Squeak back and uh meet with our interesting friend. Who is uh, chanting the spell for an hour this time? No. So Pontifex is wanting to learn <laughs> how to do it, right? Uh, Pontifex is basically going to uh, do what you're doing, like, as you're doing it. So there's two summoning circles now in your bedroom. <laughs> side by side. Um, excellent. Talix feels a little guilty for helping Fry squeak, so he'll, he'll help. Burke is a little bit confused. Doing the chanting? Yeah. For that hour a little ten. Yeah. Brick is a little bit confused, so you will probably go downstairs and get some drinks and some food. <laughs> <laughs> None of my business. <laughs> For everyone, though, so yeah. you have to tell me how much they cost. Um, as, as ordered by the governor, uh, you don't have to pay for anything. Hey. It's covered. Let's go. This isn't even supposed to be your room, but you can just keep it. <laughs> um, yeah, it appears that like the, the place was supposed to be pretty much booked for the day of deliverance, but yeah, everything got messed up. Oh, uh, before the night's out, can we sing some deliverance day carols? That's why Brooke is... <laughs> well, maybe not for singing, but for the deliverance day is why Brooke brings all the food and the drinks up. There's... After a long day, right? Oh, Vakanath, oh, Vakanath. <laughs> it's time to summon a devil. 
And Brooke shocks the first ale. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, this time the there there's two summonings happening at the same time, just side by side. Yeah? What, what do we have to chant for you, Professor? Uh, what do you usually chant for yours? What is, what is, what is Pip's chant? Squeak, the rock, squeak, gosh, the rock, squeak. <laughs> this is all happening in Talix's yeah, head. Yeah, Talix <laughs> has to relay all of this. I, I think, I mean, the professor actually witnessed this before. I think he just, yeah. Matt forgot yeah, yeah, what yeah. it was. That's fine. Uh, uh, Tekka did fuck. not forget. Uh, no. <laughs> Tekka's been scarred ever since. The second sometimes he closes his eyes, he's about to fall asleep, and he just hears that name <laughs> chanting uh, in his head. It's like an annoying ad. Out of curiosity, how do you make sure you're not someone in his father since they have the same name? Oh. Oh. Huh. <laughs> I, I never For saw that. For that one, you have to chant Squishka Torak Senior. Squishka <laughs> Torak Senior. Oh, well, we never said Junior before. Well, do you, maybe it's like, maybe because cause he's. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we, what do you guys chant for for Pontifex? Uh, I think that he's he's taking less note of the chanting and more of the actual process and like uh, like probably even using like a, like detect magic or something like that okay. to to try to figure out what's yeah, going doing... on and break this down into like uh, the equation. Yeah, your research. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, the less, chanting less is your not song essential and dance part. And more learn, like, the methodology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, t you just yeah you you're breaking down what Paper's doing, and you are like, um, you're mixing it in with whatever knowledge that you have from similar spells that you have studied already in the past, um, and the it, it's uh, roll an Arcana check. Uh, yeah, wait, you can do Steam Primordial. Is, is he someone in his own no? Maybe. <laughs> I'm a good role model. What? <laughs> Do we really need a second one? What are you doing, Professor? <laughs> By the time I'm through with he this doesn't party, have a choice, all... right? <laughs> and uh, Pontifex, the the magic that uh, uh, Pip is doing uh, is of particular interest to you in the sense that the way he's going about it is very different from you know from the way you've seen any wizard uh, do magic, and. Uh, uh, and this is a uh, this magic of the of the arcane kind, uh, but that uh, that's not the only definition to it that there is. So the the method is just sure. completely different, and even like the um, even the the details about the ingredients that he's using are different. Which you're not entirely sure if it's because he's doing something different or if it's because if it's because Pip doesn't know any better. Uh, but you you <laughs> try to. Um, you try to figure out like what is uh, uh, the at uh, the very base of the ritual that is casting and remove all the little things that perhaps this kid is getting wrong or adding that are that are superfluous and uh, you break it down and it's uh, you, you're you're watching carefully and you you got this figured out you're you're pretty sure you have y your own spin on it uh, in your own language but with your own knowledge uh, thrown on top of that. Yeah, Pip is doing like, clearly it's an arcane ritual, because I mean, I've seen people use familiars before, but he's doing something weird to it. Like he's throwing a different source in there, because uh, I've never seen someone summon in seven a devil. So he's probably doing something extra to get that kind of a familiar. And uh, the uh. professor being the huge blasphemer and heretic that he <laughs> is, is probably, um, He's chanting it in Primordial, but he's trying to, like, hammer some of his divine magic into it. He's mixing arcane and divine. Mm -hmm. As uh, <clears throat> the Blasphemous Professor is uh, known to do. Yeah, frequently. <laughs> okay. Uh, What's the result? Uh, I figure the squeak pops out first, because I'm, mm -hmm. like, kind of following yeah, you're, after you're following you a little him. bit. All right, so an hour and ten minutes later, yeah. uh, with all the chanting... Uh, there is a 
as uh, the the firelight sort of spreads across the entire circle, burning the incense and herbs into this amalgamation of smoke that coalesces in the center, and then rising up from the smoke like a like a rock star in a in a in a, sm- uh, a smoke machine. You hear, um, yeah, whatever. I'm back. <laughs> Oh, uh, good to see you. Yeah, thanks for the trip to hell, suckers. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, the beach. <laughs> the beach. Right. <clears throat> he sort of wrings out his hair. Water comes out. <laughs> Does it really? <laughs> Does he have yeah. hair? <laughs> yeah, he's got blue hair. Ooh. Oh. Wait, wait, this is an imp form, right? Not in not yep. in rap form. <laughs> imp form. I didn't know we had blue hair. Hmm. It's blue hair and blue skin. Oh, I never even knew the blue skin part. I thought that was just a color for a token. Okay. And everything was blue to him. <laughs> I'm blue, dabba dee. <laughs> I know I liked you for some he reason. Says, <laughs> oh, you summon a you summon a devil too? Don't get Patrick. He's a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I think the professor is trying to largely ignore Squeak and not mess up his incantation he's doing for the first time after it, it, heavily it's modifying a, It's a very delicate balancing act. Do I need to chant something for you? <laughs> hey, you need help? Uh, and yeah, I think uh, I think towards the end of his little ritual, um, like, uh, what does what does Squeak pop out of? Like, if, if you make like a circle or something on the ground, yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, it's actually a bunch of uh, different circles that sort of um, overlap each other in some places. But it's a circle made out of incense and herbs, and uh, the fire that spreads across them sort of starts in the center and then comes back. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think um, I think the professor like drew his little circle on the ground, and then like to to mix in his own thing, he's drawn like a. Like the like a symbol of Volkanov, like a like a tree type of logo into it, um, and like as as it's completing, uh, I think on the there's fourteen deities, yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Sounds right. Uh, yeah, so I think this tree has fourteen branches, uh, and I think like counting whatever way you want to, uh, the twelfth branch on the tree, uh, like flashes. Uh, and there's just like this, uh, like a camera flash, uh, uh, and like a little poof of, uh, of kind of aromatic smoke. Uh, and then you just hear, like a meow, uh, <laughs> and standing in the circle, uh, is a cat. It's a big, white, fluffy cat. Um, and it's doing like the, it's like a pretty big cat. Uh, I think it says they can get two feet in length. Uh, <gasps> And it's like uh, like his butt is raised up in the air, and they're doing like the cat stretch with their paws forward and their their <gasps> shoulders all the way to the ground. Uh, and then like from the from their little shoulders sprout these giant bird wings that are <gasps> literally a meter in diameter, apparently. A wingspan of three feet. And wingspan oh. of a meter. Uh, it, does it look like has... the one in your dream? In our dreams, our collective yeah. dream. <laughs> it's a it's a white fluffy cat, the same one in the dream, but this one has wings, uh, and it's. Uh, Anyone with any knowledge of Akadoth would notice this is a Tressum. No, that's a cat. We, with we wings. met one. We met one. At the, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the that's right. Yeah, and the other in. Uh, I was just oh. trying to get the cat, but uh, that works too. Oh, why would you want a cat? Tressum. Look at that. <laughs> well, yeah, I was just trying to get the cat from the dream thing, but. Uh, <laughs> I added a few, a little bit of that divinity thing to it, and I guess it was misinterpreted. Uh. <laughs> Pip gives it a, or, or Squeak gives it a sniff, and uh, says, <clears throat> "That ain't no devil, is it?" Uh, no. Wait, is it not? Uh, Where does it no. come from? I'm not entirely- that's actually a question I've never asked before. When wizards summon their familiars, they're usually from some sort of plane, but uh, And uh, he's gonna like- I think he's gonna like crouch down and like examine this cat <laughs> real close. Uh, 
It is a... Well, it is a celestial, for sure. Bleh. Bleh. Wait, <laughs> does it come from Flurna or Ladaria? I don't know. I wasn't thinking about it. Oh. I think he understands us, though. It says it speaks common. It understands it, but can't speak, and it has an intelligence of 11. So it's smarter than the average human, technically. A a am I playing a cat, or are you playing a cat? Uh, I don't. I don't really know uh, where to go wow. from here. I don't think I mean, Professor knows where to go from here. <laughs> no, I mean like just, you know, the, are you con controlling it, Matt? Am I? Uh, I think for the time being, he's just letting it be. Uh, okay. I feel like, yeah, there's a cat. There you go. You have a cat. <laughs> you just Doing. summon an angel into the room and be like, all right, go do your thing. <laughs> there you go, the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh, uh, did, did you name your squeak? Uh, was he named for you? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> no, this this punk kid didn't name me. <laughs> My dad named me, obviously. He named you Squeak? I'm Squeak Kostorox Jr. I'm named after my dad. If this kid named me, did he name my dad too? Come on, use your brain. You thought you're the smart one here. Wait, but who calls you Squeak? I... It... It's short for Squikashara. Your, your human goo mouths can't uh. say my name easily. <laughs> well, the spelling is uh, freaky. Well, that is besides the point. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think he's going to, uh, to like, telepathically link with the cat. Because I can't. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can! Because uh, I have telepathy. I took the f uh, and uh, I, or no, 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 even better. I think he's gonna detect <laughs> thoughts on this cat. <laughs> Just like poke around in its head uh, and find right. out what the hell is happening. Yeah. Um, I've seen the universe. <laughs> Alex pets the Tressim. The, um, the Tressim, the Tressim enjoys it for about five seconds uh, until he or she, Matt? Uh, she. Until she hears this this jingling of something metal, and she leaps for um, the book that cur Pip currently has. Yes, it's over here. <laughs> <laughs> and leaps for like the little bookmark where he tied the um, uh, the <laughs> dog uh, tags, and she'll start just like pulling at those. Oh, oh no, no, she's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what what do I do with this thing, Pip? <laughs> what? I was just <laughs> wanting to learn how the, the thing works, but now that I have it, I'm not sure what to do with it. P Professor, what could do I do with this? <laughs> what do you do with pets? I've never had a pet. <laughs> uh, Plantivex, you, you you feel the the uh, the thoughts in the Tresim shift from the interest in the book to the annoyance at the fact that somebody's uh, bothering her. Who's bothering her, Pip? Yeah. Hey, Pip, I wouldn't do that. She doesn't like it. I'm sure huh? you can tell. Um, I. I... I don't know, Professor. You summoned this thing into the world, but you have the power to take it out. That's what <laughs> Granny would always say. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the first part I don't even think was true. Well, it's true in this case, so let's focus on the present and not on the trauma, yeah? <laughs> let's figure out what is going on with this thing. Hey, what do you, what do? You do? <laughs> <laughs> what you could do, and he's like, like, uh, like poking the cat like on his forehead. <laughs> this, like, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Gonna get clawed to heck. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, she, <laughs> since she can't get the the um, the tags uh, out of the book. Uh, uh, she will instead start chasing Squeak around. Hey! Oh, oh no, no, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. This is gonna be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, this is kind of funny. Uh, uh, 
A Chesum can detect whether something is poisonous by taste, touch, or smell. Oh, yeah, no. she can tell. <laughs> she can tell that it's she poisonous. She can tell. <laughs> and is, uh, in, she's immune to poison mm -hmm. and a poisoned condition. She can probably tell more than that. My arch nemesis. <laughs> uh, and uh, and they can detect invisibility. No. <laughs> Within six <laughs> feet of the dress, <laughs> invisibility falls. You can see a lady. Oh, <laughs> <dear. laughs> Before the Spontifex done. <laughs> and it can fly. Right. Uh, the it has anti a climb squeak. speed and a fly speed. I don't know what the point of that is, but it does. How, but how does she do in water? Flies. Uh huh. <laughs> I don't know. It's a cat with wings. How do you think it does with water? It's probably the same as every other cat. I feel like I've made a mistake. Um, things so are starting to get knocked uh, from the table. Yeah, from the shelves. Uh, um, Squeak ra hides into a backpack and she starts pulling things out. Uh, Squeak turns into a squid. <sighs> into what? <laughs> A squid. A squid? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's fine. <laughs> She'll probably just grab him. <clears throat> and then she uh, will no, bring... You, uh, she will bring the squid. Put, uh, no, put him down. It is no... No, <laughs> it's not bad, bad cat. She, <laughs> she flies over to Pontifex <laughs> and places the squid at his feet. Okay, maybe he's... Uh, do I reward this? I don't know how to, <laughs> to do it. Is this a no, good thing or a bad thing? you don't reward this. You do realize this means war. <laughs> Squeak, you're going to have to learn how to turn into a cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the reference. Man, is a reference. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, crap. I, I suppose you need a name. Uh, Oh boy. I've got a few choice names <laughs> for it. Oh, yes, what are your uh, suggestions? I would love some input. Hmm. Roll for psychic damage. <laughs> he says some words that uh, it's better that Pip doesn't hear. They're in Infernal. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell that? <laughs> <laughs> like its name. Uh, the Tressin climbs out of the window. Uh, okay. yeah, good riddance. <laughs> I guess. What happens if they just leave? Um, maybe a cat was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that I see the day where the twelve-year-old kid has more control. Than a well, uh, this, uh, this is the first time for me. I I will learn. I learn always. But uh, she, she was cute. Uh, she was quite pretty. <laughs> it is just like in the dream. It's uh, for the wings. So what you're saying is that Pip can be your teacher now? Uh, <gasps> you have effectively taught me something by demonstration. Wow. Uh, Professor Pip. <sighs> it has a nice ring to it. <laughs> you may even have your own lector in one day. Oh, what? It is like a podium, but uh, fancier words. I don't even know what the first one was. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, should we? Well, so wait, go to I sleep see you make. Him yeah, you ready for, for the you. long rest? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a little a tired of doing all this. Uh, you know. <clears throat> I'll oh, figure it out. Can can we sleep with the door open? It it kind of helps me. Uh, and obviously. there's, it the still smells like back. smoke in here, <laughs> and lots of incense. That's why the window is open. Lots of burning incense. I don't <laughs> think we should leave the door open and rise as a window. Yeah, I'd prefer that. I don't want people. What about my cat? I just left the room. It has to come back eventually. Yes. She can come I mean, and rescue the Whatever it is fine. I mean, okay. uh, if you want to leave the door open, I can keep an eye out for you. 
Why does it come up now that you want the door open? It's been a few just, weeks. It just smells really bad in here. <laughs> oh, I'm getting a headache. It smells like home. <laughs> well, it will make you feel, fall asleep faster, too. Just a crack. <laughs> well, technically, that's okay. a crack. You know. Okay, we can do it. All right. Take your long rest, everyone. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Level. We made it. So the session can start, right? Um, <laughs> is everyone is everyone okay to continue this? Uh, how much longer? Yeah, that will be my question. Half an hour? Sure, half an hour is fine yeah, by know. me. Yeah, that should be okay. Do you need me right away? Can you, like, go on and set things up while you run to the bathroom real fast? Five minute break and we continue? That sounds like a brilliant idea. Cool. All right. I'll see you in five. Second break. I gotta come up with a name for this thing. All right. It's the next morning. That was a well-earned long rest. Mm. It was. Um. Mm, When... Uh, when you guys begin to wake up, uh, the Tresim is currently sleeping on Pontifex's face. Um, <laughs> just slightly messing with with your breathing. You're, you're, you're dreaming of the, of the plants, the spores, uh, taking over your lungs and slowly suffocating you. Ah, until a moment when you, <laughs> until a moment when you just gasp for air, sit up, and the cat it hisses and annoyedly uh, moves uh, at the feet of your bed. Sorry, was, uh, say that again. The the tressum? Yeah. I. <laughs> Do I have to know? <laughs> Were you not paying attention? Oh no. <laughs> I, okay, I may have just come up with a ridiculous name, so I was <laughs> no, 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 no. So, so the cat, capacity. so the cat reacted to something and started hissing. <clears throat> reacted to Pontifex so waking up and uh, getting her off of his face. Oh, yeah, okay. perfect. Yeah, oh my god, what? <laughs> if anyone else wakes up from Pontifex yelling "what" at a cat <laughs> sitting on his face. <laughs> Wood. What? What do you want? Go away. <laughs> You'll get used to it, Professor. <laughs> Did something happen, Professor? I don't. She is behaving <laughs> weird. What? What is it, girl? What? It, what, do you, what does your tresem nostril smell? Poison? <laughs> <laughs> she'll just be. Uh, she'll just be at the, at the feet of your bed for like the rest of the morning. How do I kill you? <laughs> uh, you you make your preparations. You're planning on uh, following. Uh, uh, Brooke, did you tell them about your plan for this morning? Uh, you got somewhere to be. Uh, uh, I, uh, yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, you know that Brooke wants to take you somewhere uh, first thing in the morning, and then you're all gonna follow. <laughs> Uh, Talix South. Uh, you're gonna take some horses and go meet with the Atara. Technically, I wanted to bring Cass first with uh, Saskarin. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you got a plan for the day. <laughs> um, and as you begin to head downstairs, uh, um, hoping to get some breakfast, you see that. Uh, um, Kylo is not behind the counter, he's behind the, the open door and is looking out into the, uh, the plaza that uh, his inn faces. And, and, and um, through, through the doorway past Kylo, you can see there is kind of a, there's a crowd gathered, uh, the plaza is quite full. Uh, and despite the, <clears throat> despite the amount of people that seem to be gathered there, it's, uh, um, it's a little quiet. Not deadly silent, but quieter than uh, you would expect. Uh, Kailu, what is happening? Um, he just gestures at the doorway and he says, 
We lost some people. Just now? No, uh, with what happened the other day. Oh. And as you peek through the open entrance way, <clears throat> it's a it's a bit of a chilling sight. In the main plaza of Simlielon, a, a series of coffins are arranged about a dozen feet from one another and surrounded with flowers. There's a <clears throat> excuse me. There's a small crowd that occupies the plaza, with most people divided into smaller groups that surround specific coffins. A couple of elves in priestly garments are consoling the grieving families, and uh, you see the governor off to the side, uh, watching over the plaza in silence, with his arms crossed. Uh, there's another man, uh, a bit further in the distance, who's currently in the process of removing the pennants that uh, decorate the area, and bitterly remind you of the celebrations that never took place. As you're uh, gathering uh, around the, the exit of the tavern, just all looking out at the scene, uh, you notice a couple of men uh, suddenly rushing across the plaza and running up to the governor. They whisper something in his ear and point in the direction it just came from, and the governor visibly turns pale. In the following seconds, a strange silence falls upon the plaza, almost like a crashing wave. Every head turns to face north. It's so quiet now that you can almost hear the light footsteps of the man that grabbed everyone's attention. You recognize the white hair, the pale skin, and the imposing presence of Baryon Thar, the archcleric of the fairy dragon, as he coldly stares at the death that lays before his eyes. Is there anything you want to do? Or are you just oh. watching? Oh. Um. Okay, first of all, how many coffins? Is this like... Like... A sizable chunk of the city's population? Like... No. One in ten people are dead now? Or like... There is uh, about, uh, from from your angle, you're not seeing all of them. Uh, you're seeing about a dozen. There's probably a few more. It's not as bad as something of this scale could have been. But uh, it's lives that have been lost. What do we do? Uh, I think Talix is still kind of letting letting what's in front of us hit him. Uh, he's not going to jump up to respond to Varianthar. He's just going to look and see what what Varianthar is doing. Okay. Uh, does it look like he he just sent for a messenger to come speak to the governor? Um, no. It looks more like somebody just ran up to tell the governor who just arrived uh, and you oh. see that the governor hurries in his direction and uh, they are a fair distance away from you but uh, you can catch a conversation mainly due to the fact that uh, the rest of the city is so quiet I mean, is uh, this like all taking place in a town square somewhere? yeah, the, your your right in face is like the largest plaza of Simlielon, it's like this whole right. section so, uh, and he uh, arrived from this direction. Is by himself? Yes. Interesting. Um, maybe we should head over that way. Like uh, right now? I wasn't. I thought he would write to me. I didn't think he would just show up. But here I am. I mean, we're I not brought prepared. this. I brought this. We're as ready as we'll ever be. Uh, I just. <sighs> okay, yeah. Let's head over. Let's head over, right? <clears throat> well, sure. I think he will fall back to Pontifex and tell him, hold on to that seed. Uh, of course. Maybe I should go alone, actually. 
Uh, yeah, before any of you are implicated with me. Uh, in fact, I should get away from you now. Felix, let's Just... be honest. Uh, if you're involved in something and they're looking for you, they likely know who I am and know my name. All right. I'll go up alone first. After I'm away from you, give the seat to Brooke. I can... You three try only to get involved. In... Oh, go ahead. What was your plan? Just, I was just going to tell you, only get involved if it looks like you need to. For now... Should we stay close? Yeah, stay in sight. Um... Stay where you can see us. They have seen some of us before, right? Have we met Baron Sar? We have, right? In the church? I don't know if you did. I, I don't think I Brooke, did. Uh, I... Brooke, Pip, and uh, Tekka did. Oh, they did? Okay. They spoke with him so, briefly. Yeah, so he knows how we look like, and there's a chance that he might recognize us, right? He knows that you met with Hinwald then. Yeah. I have certain ways to disguise myself, so I can try right, to work disguise on that myself we'll... in the crowd. But... Well, I head up there. Um, Kylo is just looking at the rest of you and glances at Brooke in a, like, what the hell is happening kind of way, but, um, um, instead of asking questions, he just says, I'm hearing nothing, and he, like, takes <laughs> a small step away from you. So oh, I'm so. gonna, I'm gonna take, like, I'm gonna make an effort to kind of disappear into the crowd and look like I'm coming up separately from any of these folks. Okay. So that, that, that his attention doesn't also get drawn to them. All right. Um, as you approach the two of them, can I have an insight check from you, Talix? Not the check I thought I was making, but let's go. <laughs> it's higher than it used to be. Woo. Oh. Okay. Um, is it getting a little bit closer and you're picking up more, more and more of the conversation between Barayan and the governor? Um, it looks like the uh, the governor is bringing him up, up to speed on what happened in the colony, um, but uh, uh, from from what you can tell, it kind of feels like Baron is not really paying attention. Um, to you'd expect that something this uh, this big would. Uh, um, uh, it almost feels like he's not taking it with the right uh, um, uh, urgency, uh, as opposed to the to the uh, sweating uh, governor, who um, also sixteen. Yeah, um, it seems like he was not ready for uh, the visit of an arch cleric of the Jade Council, um, and he just seems very unprepared for what's going on and as you're making your way through the crowd you see at some point as uh, that Baryanthar just like, raises a hand um kind of cuts the governor mid-sentence uh, and he says I've heard enough you up there uh and for a moment you freeze but he's pointing not at you he's pointing like a little bit like over you and to the side uh at the one guy the one elf that's on top of a ladder that's currently in the process of removing uh the decorations across the plaza and uh, Baryanthar says, Put those back. The day of deliverance is a joyful celebration that I won't allow this colony to miss. Um, the, the elf looks a little um, perplexed. He looks at the governor and back at the arch cleric, not really sure who he should be taking orders from right now, and just awkwardly places back the little flag he had just taken down. Um... Talix, do you stay in the crowd or do you step forward? I, so I'm casually going forward before I am before I am intentionally making myself visible to him. Uh, I want to try to uh, just clasp my my preserved bit of Vakanoth mm -hmm. and whisper a little prayer of guidance for myself as I Prepare to face this terrifying person in front of me. Has, <clears throat> has Brooke received the seed? From Pontifex? Uh, sure. 
Right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, once he's gone up there, I will hand over the Sagita as per his instruction. Uh, you wouldn't, you should probably find a way to stay somewhat close to them. And I think he goes back into the tavern. I would probably cast this guy's self so he doesn't look like a furbok and just like a really tall elf. <laughs> 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 okay. Really tall, really bulky elf. He, he plays on the basketball team. And... <laughs> He's annoyed that everyone keeps asking him if he plays basketball. <laughs> And I think Beef, when he's right outside the bar, he will go invisible for a second and then appear closer to, well, closer to Baryon and Talix and okay. the governor. The rest of you? Uh, what's Tekka doing? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm struggling with figuring that out, too, so... Pip will struggle with you. <laughs> the two of you stay with Kailu. Uh, yeah. What about Pontifex? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think Pontifex is pretty... Mm. Like, mm, I don't know, he's stuck between stay back and stay with the group, or just go with Talix anyways, because... Like you said, if anyone they think happens to him, it's probably going to happen to Pontifex too. Uh, so he, I think he's like kind of just standing there and like largely ignoring what the others are doing and is kind of stuck in, in analysis paralysis for the time being. Okay. I'm just thinking what to do. Sure. Um, Talix and, well, all of you see this. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh that, uh, Baryon is taking a few steps more towards like the center of the plaza kind of leaving the governor behind who like after a few seconds sort of like catches up to him um and uh, the as the arch cleric is uh, pretty much in front of one of the coffins uh he turns to face the crowd uh he seems like he's about to to speak to them uh yeah it's after finishing guidance, Talix will go up to him. Okay. Uh, emerging from the crowd, Talix, uh, is Brook directly with him, or like... No, no, no. Talix deliberately separated himself from the group. Okay. Yeah, but Brook, like, kind of caught up a little bit, so that's what I was asking. Yeah, I, I, he's not right he with him, different. but in rage that he could react. Yeah, sure thing. Um... Yes, uh, Talix kind of separates himself from the crowd, and, uh, um steps towards the arch cleric a lot of eyes uh, um, are on him um and uh Baryon had just like held a hand and uh, to uh, um it it looked from the gesture he was doing like he was about to uh to cast a spell uh but oh. he doesn't even begin uh he freezes in that position and makes eye contact with you Talix. Honorable Arch Cleric. Thank you for meeting me. Uh, and uh, before Baryon Thara can say anything, the governor sort of like jumps in and says, uh, that's, that's him. Uh, he's one of, and like, um, and Baryon again cuts him off uh, uh, and simply says, I will speak to you later. To me? Was that to me? Yeah. It was. It was to, towards Alex. Okay. Um. I'll just step aside. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay. The. Oh, did I already? I already added an usual on side check. Okay. Um, it it's surprising how uh, how little he seemed to care about the fact that you were there um, at this particular moment, despite the fact that you're pretty sure he came here for you. Um, but he doesn't seem to be in a rush to uh, to capture you or to isolate you in any way. At least for now. So if that is any comfort to Talix, uh, 
Um, that's the impression he just got. So what's going on? Um, Byron speaks to the crowd. He turns a little bit, so he's uh, uh, like he, his left shoulder is facing you. Um, he doesn't seem to be keeping an eye on you uh, in the slightest. Um, he speaks up. His um, his voice is generally uh, something of like a whisper. It feels like uh, uh, his voice uh, is. Uh, carries the wind itself and somehow it manages to reach across the plaza even those of you uh, at the entrance of the tavern can hear it very clearly as he said as he um, the arch cleric of the fairy dragon says when i was eight years old i was bitten by a venomous snake and i died with a wave of his hand a beautiful ornate chest appears suddenly by his side almost as if it had always been there. Barion continues. When my parents found me, my heart had already stopped. But I came back to them. And when I opened my eyes, I told them everything I had seen while my soul was gone. I told them of the glorious beauty of Akanath. I told them that I met the beasts that live with her. I told them I had played with a small magical dragon and that I wanted to be his friend for the rest of my life. Um, Byron <laughs> leans forward, he opens the lid, reaches into the chest, pulls out a large, clear diamond, perhaps the biggest that any of you have ever seen, and holding the gemstone in front of him, he keeps talking. Of course, my parents were shocked to hear my words. First of all, Legionazzi speaking with such enthusiasm about the Jade Pantheon was ridiculous. For my, for my people have been persecuted by the Alliance for centuries, just like yours. Not to mention that, at the time, Bakanath was dead. But soon, we all heard the news. The day I had died for a short while was the same day when Bakanath had returned to life. The day of rebirth means something personal to me. It's also my day of rebirth. It's the day when I met the gods and understood my destiny. I celebrate the precious life that on that day was returned to me and celebrate the life that was returned to Vakanath. Today, let us celebrate the return of these lives as well. Um, there is a moment of uh, uh, silence. Baryanthar closes his eyes, then opens them and begins to chant. Pontifex, you are the only person in the entire colony, and perhaps one of the very few in the, in the entirety of the known world on either continent, on either known continent, who sees something more than anyone else at this moment. Um, to everyone else's eyes, <clears throat> the Arch Cleric is casting a spell. He speaks in uh, uh, a divine tongue. He moves his, his hands, uh, his focus, uh, um, seems uh, like nothing could break it you've seen most people have seen others casting spells before uh and this is just another instance uh, of something like this uh, but pontifex you see something that uh, you never thought you would see someone else do it's your thing it's what you have been studying it's what you have been practicing and you can feel it in the weave of magic all around you. This is a divine spell, it's divine magic that is being uh, changed, it's being affected by arcane magic at the same time. The diamond in Baryon's hands uh, begins to crack and through the cracks uh, light 
pours out almost like it's liquid light begins to drip down onto the open coffin and then he closes his fist and the entire diamond shatters and as the uh, the remains of the gemstone fall onto the corpse that occupies the coffin a mere minute after Baryon started chanting the dead sits up awake and alive all yeah, of I them think he's, i think he's walking towards the one he's in front of oh <laughs> not a lot of things <clears throat> keep uh, the professor away from this moment so yeah I oh, think he's walking he's, he's, he's walking up he's making his way through the crowd uh, seeing uh, from a little bit more up close yeah yeah because <clears throat> he was he was staying back with the group but was stuck between the w w should he stay or should he go and he is now elected to go. Uh, yeah, so he's mm -hmm. he's approaching Baryon Thar and Talix from wherever he was. And um, to, um, to Pontifex's uh, delight, I suppose, Baryon reaches into the chest, pulls out another diamond, moves in front of another coffin, and repeats this. And Pontifex has another chance to watch the crowd um, on the first dead person, risen from the dead. Um, there have been gasps, and uh, some people have clapped. Uh, um, s there's been a small crowd that gathered around the coffin, people who knew this person, and they began to laugh and cry and hug them. Um, but despite the fact that you just watched a miracle take place in front of your eyes, uh, the crowd's reaction is actually quite mild. There's a lot of people who stay silent. A lot of people who look either unimpressed or even even bothered by what just occurred the governor seems uh, frozen in place uh, uh, unable to to take a step or take his eyes away from the scene as uh, uh, a minute later Baryon Thar has resurrected a second person he moves over to the third coffin and a woman steps forward from the crowd and gets in his way. She stands between the arch cleric and the coffin he was approaching. And uh, she says, Not him. Not this one. Baryon seems. His cold expression for, for a moment to see. Uh, you see a hint of perplexity, but he. Um, it goes away as quickly as he should have. Uh, he simply says, Why? The woman replies, The only way to move forward is to walk a path with a starting point and a destination. Otherwise, all we would do is run in circles. Undoing death is unnatural. Leave my father be. A few other people step forward and they stand around a few other coffins, almost guarding them. Baryon hesitates, then he reaches for his chest, plucks a few more diamonds from it, and instead he approaches the coffins that uh, um, do not have people standing between him and them. And no less than ten minutes later, uh, a total of five people have returned from the dead. And that's where we're gonna end the session. Whoa. <clears throat> Interesting. That's Son fine, of right? A bitch, that's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your notes. <laughs> well, he is the arch cleric of the fairy dragon, which is yeah. the god of magic. So, Arcana. maybe, maybe. Show uh, me your notes. <laughs> you maybe cheat. it truly really is the god of arcane magic. Maybe there's like a thing there. Wow. I don't know. Hey, is, that, um, that's a powerful domains cleric. domains of, of the deities, like uh, we can see the, the do like cleric domains that generally worship these deities. Is the Arcana domain like a, like we know that exists? Yeah. Hmm. To your, so, uh, to your and Talix's knowledge, uh, Arcana, like even if, Arcana encompasses all magic. 
and in the interpretation sure. of uh, the Jade Council and the Jade Alliance, uh, um, the Fairy Dragon is exclusively for uh, divine magic. It's the god of mm. magic. I see, I see. Okay. So in, in this case, it's more that it's doing arcane stuff, but with divine magic instead of arcane magic. But, uh, but not, not quite. Was, was utilizing arcane magic. But with this, this in was, this it's the opposite. Instance, it's divine. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. In this instance, it is divine magic yeah. that is affected by arcane magic. And to okay. anyone before, else, this would be like indistinguishable um, mm -hmm. from just divine magic. You happen mm. to have just the right expertise to like. Um, you, it, there isn't even a different way that that Tharian does. Uh, Tharian, Barian does anything. Right. Um, you just feel it in the weave of magic, the way it's yeah. being altered. I caught you with your pants down. Okay, yeah, fantastic. He has a lot of fifth level spell slots. <laughs> he can yeah. upcast. Oh, he's got some cheat code that's just letting him do it. I've seen Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a spell storing item. He's cheating. Philosopher's Stone. Yeah. Yeah. This man, we're going to have a conversation with this man. That That's the plan, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a different, different than planned conversation. <laughs> or at least one of us is. Boy, this was a... A lot of revelations. <laughs> yeah, uh, I definitely got an easy recap to do. So, uh, Sid, good luck. This one was... Uh... Yeah, most of the session was you guys being in the same room. <clears throat> true. Yeah. That is true. <clears throat> also, um, Winter, were we supposed to see your role there? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I okay. wanted that to Let's be on it. stream. Okay. Yeah, cool. Oh, uh, should we say goodbye to the stream? Yes! <laughs> the time stream. has come. Goodbye, stream. Goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye people from the future. Stream. <laughs> oh, you little stream. <laughs> Don't stay uh, up too late. What did you say? Uh, oh, what did you say to Pip? I forgot. Terrifying oh, Lil's Camp. Oh. <laughs> There were a couple of variations of it. Creepy today. little, whatever. Yeah, creepy, terrifying, and then confused. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. You terrifying confused. little scamp. There it is. Yeah. Goodbye, you wonderful little scamps. <laughs> mm, I could really Bye. go for some scamping. Scamps. Bye. 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 See ya. We always have Street the long over. goodbyes. Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye. Thanks for thanks for playing a little bit longer with us, uh, you Europeans. You no. European oh. little scamps. You people who currently live in Europe. I hope. Uh, I mean, it's difficult. Yeah. I hope you're all well, and that we haven't like ruined your tomorrows. You haven't. <laughs> okay. That's my work's job. Just the next six days until the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for running. That was... I yeah. hope you had fun. Enjoy dealing with this cat. <laughs> 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 that kind of goes to everyone. We I'm, have a new I'm very, I'm very excited to see where this rivalry goes <laughs> between <laughs> Squeak and whatever you've decided to name this cat. Yeah, it didn't, uh, didn't actually end up coming up, so I ended up deleting the name, because I think what? it's going to be a funny reveal. Remind I me have come up with a name. Yay! Remind me, what do you call Squeak when, he, when he's a uh, uh, squid? S squink. 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 Squid cost the rocks. <laughs> so, rat is squeak. Uh... Spider is Squirt, Raven is Squawk, and uh, uh, Squid is Squink. It's a perfect system. It's really <laughs> good, I like it. It is a good system. <laughs> to take this simple naming convention and then also go the opposite of that. <laughs> I think I think my cat has more letters in their name than I do. 
Oh, oh no. <laughs> I haven't counted, but it's a lot. It takes up two lines, so. Oh no. <laughs> Cool. I'll, I'll uh, see you all in a week. And yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Before we, before I interrogate an arch cleric and see how badly that goes. He's out of all these high level spell horribly. slots. Oh, yeah. He's in all the best time. You're red. Now's the chance. It's just so chance. often for so long that everyone else is bored of seeing it. So he's probably just got this, right? Probably just unlocked this for the first time. <laughs> Alright, well, I will see you guys in a week. I gotta go from there. Alright. Yep. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Uh, bye. bye.